four, but they swarm to the attack. But Hartford goaltender Mike Liu plays Horatio at the bridge. Once the Whalers get on track, it's the Nordiques who have to come from behind. The Stashney set up Brent Ashton. Regulation ends 2-2, followed by the drama of overtime. Gifted goal scorer Sylvain Turgeon guns the winner. The Whalers have their first ever. Ahead 2 0. And while Leute is again outstanding, so too is Dave Babbage. And McDermott scores again. It ends 4 1. The Whalers have Quebec on the ropes. It's a best of five. This could end tonight. Game three, Hartford and Quebec. Center in Hartford, Connecticut. Crowling will keep sports, Stanley Cup playoffs on CTV. Win with the Whalers, the city's pride. Win with the Whalers, be on the side. Win Hockey fans here are ecstatic, of course, they even have a brand new Whalers fight song. But the team has also caught the city by surprise. Two games up on the mighty Nordiques, well, who would have believed that? The truth is, of course, the Whalers have a very good hockey team. They're also hot. In their last 13 games, they have only lost once. The Quebec Nordiques, on the other hand, have a lot of talent. They also have a lot of character. We do not expect them to fold up tonight. CTV will follow the series to its conclusion, be it tonight, tomorrow, or Tuesday in Quebec City. With more in the series, Dan Kelly and Ron Roosh. It's not hard to explain why the Hartford Whalers won the first two games. They've received spectacular goaltending from Mike Liute, and they tell me David Babbage's leadership on defense has been something else. But, Ron, what about the division champion Nordiques? Well, they're maybe facing the Adams division jinx. That is, the jinx that's gone on for five years where the Adams division regular season winner can't seem to advance in the playoffs. But they've got a big problem on defense. They've got three people that have been injured, David Shaw and Norman Rochefort, and also missing the last game was Gilbert Delorme. But they've also got the big problem with Peter Stosny. He has a blood disorder. His blood count is down, an iron deficiency, and he is really paying the price out on the ice. And without his leadership, the team's in trouble. The Nordiques, by the way, feel it's vital that they score the game's first goal tonight. Of course, the Nordiques would welcome a goal of any description. They've only scored three in the first two games of this series. Joining us as analysts tonight, our old pal Brad Park. He's played this game a little, coached it some now, too. And Detroit and Brad, coming into this game, which could end the series tonight, what's the coaching perspective? I think from the Quebec Nordiques, uh, Michel Bergeron is going to have his team going. They're going to concentrate on the first 20 minutes and deal with the second period when they get to it. Their power plays one for nine. They've got to get the puck to Peter Stastny. That's the main guy. I don't care how sick he is. The Hartford Whalers, on the other hand, have got to come up with killer instinct. They're going to have to match Ron Francis against Peter Stastny, and that might not be a good idea. Of course, there are two other teams anxiously awaiting the result tonight because the winner of that other series will meet in the Adams Division title game. It is Montreal at Boston Canadiens leading 2 nothing. Elsewhere, the other series of all resumed tonight in New York. Two games, Rangers and the Flyers tied at one. The Islanders trying to stave off elimination. They trail Washington 2 nothing. Surprising Leafs could win at home and oh, Chicago. Minnesota in St. Louis tonight. That series tied at one. No surprises in the Smythe. Edmonton and Calgary are on the road, but both lead two games tonight. This is Stanley Cup playoff action on CTV. Three in the Adams Division semifinal series. Now the national anthem and Tony Harrington. Oh, Canada, 
So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wait for the land of the free and the whole with the National Anthem, a sellout crowd at the Civic Arena in Hartford, Connecticut, and we are ready for game three. The referee tonight, celebrating his 38th birthday, by the way, Ron Hogarth, the two linesmen, Jim Christensen and Ron Finn. In goal for the Nordics is Clint Malarchuk of Calgary. Third playoff start ever in the first two games he played well, but allowed seven goals against. Mario Goslan will be the backup tonight. And for the Whalers, uh, just a tower of strength, Mike Leud of Western Ontario leads all playoff goaltenders with a 1.46 average. He's allowed only three goals in this series. He's been in 16 of the last 17 Whaler games, and his backup tonight will be Steve Weeks. But back with the starting lineup, uh, Peter Stosti on right wing, Gillis on at center, and over on the left side, it is Elaine Cote, so a little bit of a jumbled lineup. Jarvis, Tippett, and McDermott starting for Hartford. Here we go in game three, and immediately the puck is cleared into the Quebec zone. Pat Price is there, flips it into center ice, knocked down by Kleinendorst and shot to the Quebec line. And now Stosny, number 26, Peter Stosny, getting it into center ice. Here's Elaine Cote, upended by McDermott, and the Whalers come back the other way. Dave Tippett, number 15, shooting one in Malarchuk. A glove save on the short side there. And Quebec come back with Moeller, flipping it into center ice. Leinendorf knocks that down to Samuelson. Now over on right wing to John Anderson. He's checked, and Price cleared it into center ice. Hartford controlling it. Deneen dropping it back into his own zone. And number 44, Dave Babich, back to number 11, Kevin Deneen. Got it to center, Goulet intercepting. And the Nordiques now beat it into center. Here's a break. Down left wing for Stosny, taken out by Deneen and Hartford Clerk. Here's John Anderson getting away from Gord Donnelly. Now to Dave Babbitt. He's in across the line, but Jackson Robert Picard jerks it around on the wing to Anton Stosny, number 20. Flipping it ahead. Wendell breaks it up, and here's Dave Babbitt to Ron Francis. Francis for Hartford to John Anderson. Pull down by Picard. He'll get a penalty here. the NHL on CTV. Carlsberg Light. All right. People here. Say it's wonderful here. Carlsberg Light. 
Pittsburgh light. All right. Crack a cold one and you see why it's got that great light taste for me. How's bad light? All right. Praise the cheer for good beer. Robert Picard took a penalty he had to take there. Hooking was the call as Anderson was the one breaking in, and it looks like the Whalers are going for the throat very early here. A couple of good plays set up there by Babbage. Here's Dean Evison, number 12, on the Whaler power play. Trying to center it. Getting it into the corner to Turjaw. He's checked. And Pat Trice then clearing it into center ice. And here's Mike Eagles for the Nordiques. Couldn't get around Babbage. Hartford, one for seven on the power play so far in this series. Over the regular season, they were 11th best in the league with a 22 percentage. Moeller trying to clear it out. Now Gavin for Hartford. Back to the net, trying to make a centering play. Over to Evison, he missed it, and Francis, number 10 at the point, burying it in. Here's the chance for Gavin. Stuart Gavin, one of the real finds for the Whalers this year. Back to Dave Babbage, to Gavin, number 7. Back to the other point to Francis. Shooting Malarchuk, a stick save. Puck high in the air, and then a good play by Kota. He took a man out, knocked him out of the way, and then cleared the puck up. Francis again for Hartford, checked by Kota. Evison getting it to Terja. Back to Dave Babbage for the Whalers. Babbage number 44 to Terja. It's the ball. They score! Benin, I believe, tipped it in after the original shot and hit the post. Ron, I'm not sure if Benin put it in or the goaltender Marlar Chuck himself put it in. I'll take the latter. Watch it come off the post, come back. And now Malarchuk just moved his skate back. And as he did, he slid it into the net. But again, the pressure was there. The key man was Gavin along the boards and Babbage pinching in. There he is. And he was going for it, but it was Malarchuk reaching back. And if his skate didn't push it in, his stick would have. Kevin Deneen apparently has been given credit for it. And the Whalers, as you can tell, are in front. This crowd, this town, has gone hockey crazy, obviously. A place that was nearly on the ash heap in terms of hockey here because of four teams. They have really caught fire, the fans here in this town. Big pep rally in the hotel next to the complex here. And now they're leading 1-0 in what could be the deciding game of this series. And Kevin Deneen, who was born in Quebec City, gets Hartford the lead with a deflection and a power play goal. Here's Wayne Babbage getting it into center ice, knocked down by Elaine Lemieux. And now here's a chance for Hartford as they move in again, but it's broken up, and Ashton comes back for Quebec. Giving it to Lemieux, who's just up from Fredericton in the American League. He flips it in, now Lemieux out of that check by Ashton. Ashton trying to center. Gets it back to Siltonen. He lost it to Wayne Babbage, who leaves it for Ferrero, number 26. In on the wing to Tory Robertson, into Wayne Babbage, centered. Or Donnelly there to clear it away. Buck comes loose in the slot, and Ashton has it for Quebec. He gets it into center ice. Now Donnelly, number 34, will try. He's checked. And Anton Stosny has it. Getting it into the zone, but Dave Babbage is there to clear it up. The Hartford scoring play, Kevin Deneen from Terja and Dave Babbage, 2.29 the time. A power play goal. Here's Gilbert Delorme. Getting the puck into the Hartford zone, but it's offside at the Hartford Whaler Blue Line. The Nordics come into this game with injury problems. David Shaw and Norman Rushmore off their defense, not playing tonight. Robert Picard is playing hurt. He's got a bad shoulder and is favoring it. Up from the minors, they've called Alain Lemieux, along with Gord Donnelly, and defenseman Jeff Brown was sent down to Fredericton to replace Donnelly. Not dressed tonight, Jimmy Mann, rookie Trevor Steinberg, Greg Malone, Peter Anderson, the defenseman, and the third goaltender, uh, Richard Sevigny. Meanwhile, for the Whalers, the injuries, only one of them, as we've got some penalties being called here. Dana Merzen, who could have played tonight, but he's been bothered by a bruised left shoulder and has missed the last two games. Their extra men are Billy Gardner and Paul Lawless. So basically, after a year filled with injuries and injury problems, they come into the playoffs very healthy. Stuart Gavin and Michelle Goulet to the penalty box. Brad Park is back in our CTV booth for this playoff game. Brad, I talked at the outset and I listened to the Nordiques. They said that how important it was that they scored the first goal. They didn't. How much of a bearing will that have? 
Well, you can't put your uh, everything, all your basket, your eggs in one basket and count on just getting the first goal. They gotta have a good first period. I think that's more what they're after. There's a chance for Hunter as he was upended and will get a penalty here against Hartford. And as of, as of right now, Quebec will be going on a power play here in Hartford, Connecticut. Goodyear's big event sale to see some really great performers. At crowd-pleasing prices. Talk about performance. Stylish Eagle Radio. Great handling and a great price. Look! Arriva all-season steel-belted radials. Another prudent performer. Perfect for domestic and import cars. Ooh, Tiempo. Darling of the highway. Goodyear's newest all-season radial. From only $45.95 or less. Goodyear's once-a-year big event sale. On uh, now, but hurry, the glitter fades April 19th. Doug Jarvis doesn't get many penalties. He just picked up two minutes for hooking at the 401 mark. The previous penalties to Gavin and Goulet were for slashing. So the Nordics get a chance here to go on the power play. There's the hooking as Hunter was breaking in over the line. And he went down, I guess, through the sheer force of the momentum after that last hook by Jarvis. The Mac just one for eight on the power play in the playoffs. Seventh best over the season in the NHL with 99 goals, the most of any team in hockey. And Quebec on the power play. Peter Stastny to Robert Picard. Over to number 26, Peter Stastny. Into the corner to Sobe. Back to Picard again. To Peter Stastny. Quebec with the man advantage. Peter Stastny to Picard. Shooting one. Well, you've got his blocker up to get a piece of that. And then it's cleared by Popwell and shot out of there by Dean Everson. Back to Silton and loses to Tippett. Tippett for Hartford, taken out by Seltonen, and now Quebec take over in their own zone with little J.F. Sobe, number 15. Sobe having trouble. Now breaks free on right wing at center. Dumps it in. Anton Stosti in to get it, but Ol Samuelson is there to clear it, and he cleared it up over the glass, and we'll get a face off back in the Hartford zone. Oh, Samuelson, one of the young defensemen on this team, and a pretty good defenseman he is, too, and he knows how to look after himself in the National Hockey League. We talk about the job that has been done here in Hartford. I think we'd be very remiss if we don't mention that Jack Evans is the coach of this team, and Jack Evans has done a terrific job. He's come under fire in this city. He's a very patient man, a man of very few words, as we all find out when we, we talk to him. He is not one of the most communicative people, but obviously whatever ideas he has when it comes to playing this game of hockey, he's getting through to his players because they are disciplined, and this last month is one of the great stretch drives, I think, that you'll ever see in NHL history. Here's a loose puck with Samuelson intercepting it now for Hartford and clearing it out of there. Racing after Tippett. He pokes it around the large shot, trying to get in front. Shoot. He scores! Dave Tippett! mistake here. Brad, he who hesitates often is lost. And I think that what happened here was Malarchuk hesitated coming out. He hesitated coming out, and Tippett just knocks it by him. Now Tippett's smart enough to know that he's going to come, somebody come to him, which Stastny does, and he catches, throws the shot before Malarchuk can turn around. What an effort. What an effort by Tippett. Listen to this crowd. They are hockey crazy here in Hartford, Connecticut. It's 2-0 for the Whalers. A shorthanded goal by Dave Tippett, the native of Mooseman, Saskatchewan. What a big goal that is. Well, sheer hustle again. His first goal of the playoffs. Samuelson will get the assist on it at 5.22. Well, the Quebec power play, as I mentioned, only one for eight, and now they've given up a shorthanded tally as well. Buck is cleared in by the Nordiques, who are still in a power play. But Kevin Deneen is there to clear it out. And hustling back is Peter Stosting with John Anderson on his tail. Cleared around to Risto Siltonen. Siltonen, who used to be with the Whalers until a late season trade. Passing it in to Steve Patrick, who dumps it in. Leud out of the net. Flips it out to Deneen. Deneen missed it, but so did Siltonen. And Peter Stosting has to go back for Quebec. Into center ice to Patrick. 
He just shot it off the boards, intercepted by Ron Francis. Francis for Hartford, dumping it in. And Malarchuk leaves it for Peter Stostick. Number 26, Peter Stostick. Coming into the Hartford zone, trying to flip it through. David Leute cleared it away. And then it's shot out by the Whalers as Tory Robertson cleared it out. Going back is Pat Price. Knocked it away. Here's Ferraro centering, but Moeller was there for Quebec. Now, Tory Robertson has shot just wide. Mike Eagles coming up with it and clearing it down the ice for the Nordiques as Leute comes out of the net to play it and feeds it for Mike McEwen. He couldn't get it out, but now covering up is Francis to Robertson at center. Long shot grabbed by Malarcha. Throws it back to the goal, and the Nordiques, who trail 2 to nothing, try and clear it. Good play by Cote to get it by McEwen at the point. Now Moeller for the Nordiques. He can't get anywhere, now shoots it in. And it's knocked down, and Klein endorsed number 18 for Hartford, flipping it to Babich, and that's called back on a two-line offside. Two to nothing here in the early going for Hartford. This is the NHL on CTV. Okay. Glad to see the pioneer spirits alive and well in Canada, just like Oz. Looking over open fires, roughing it under canvas, and you got the old fosters to make it bearable. And you lucky beggars, they're selling the liquid gold for the same price as your regular brew. Just as well, too. Looks like some of you still have to go out and trap your own coats. Good on you, love. Foster's Australian for beer, now brewed here. Looking for a sweep over the Islanders in the Patrick Division, and they are off to a good start on the island. One nothing. Caps. Rod Langway scoring. Here it is, two to nothing in favor of Hartford. Whalers have killed off that penalty. They're back in full strength. Here's Hunter for Quebec. A quick shot. Lee the same rebound. And Anton Stosny couldn't handle the puck properly. And, and it's cleared away by Tim Bothwell. Held in by Delore. Hunter deflected it. It went wide. Now Samuelson takes his man out back of the net. And there'll be a penalty here for holding against Ulf Samuelson of the Hartford Whalers. And the penalty box door is open. Samuelson being talked to by a couple of Nordiques, including Dale Hunter. And... He'll go to the penalty box. He's a very aggressive European player. Anton Sassy had a great chance. And I think this is typical of all of the things that have been going wrong with the game with, as far as the Nordics are concerned. There's the holding behind the net. But Anton had the wide open net right at the side of the net and just fanned on it as he got the rebound off Leut. So Samuelson goes in on the, that play. And again, the Nordics, who had the power play advantage a couple of moments ago and didn't come up with a shot, have now got an opportunity once again as we look at Claude LaRose in the foreground and of course Jack Evans. LaRose, the former Canadian, Minnesota North Star, St. Louis Blue, who now is an assistant coach here in Hartford. Bradley Nordiques were facing a lot of pressure coming in here. They're facing even more now. Oh, that's a long road to haul for them, but uh, it's early in the game. That's one thing that they do have going for them. And they're on a power play right now, number 12, Silton. Feeding it into center ice, and on the fly is Goulet backhanding it in. Leute out of the net, flips it over onto the boards, knocked down by Quebec, centered out in front. Siltonen giving it to Picard. Into Goulet, knocked away, and Tippett then feeds it out, and here's Jarvis one-on-one -on -one against Siltonen. Jarvis is shot, Malarchuk a stick save, and here's Peter Stosny, number 26. Couldn't get it in, Everson for Hartford. Knocked it down. Now Picard moving in. His shot to flex and goes to the corner. And then the Whalers are there to clear it. And Everson backhanding it baseball style out into center ice. Picard beating one up the middle as Goulet gives it to Peter Stostick. Back to Goulet. He missed it. And now taking over is Lemieux, number 31. Aline Lemieux back to Picard. Back to Lemieux. Side of the net to Stostick. Dosti centered, Picard a shot, Leut the save, rebound, they score! Lemieux was there to get the rebound. And the call up just today from the Fredericton Express in the American League, Ali Lemieux scores a crucial power play goal for 31. Quebec. Well, it gets them right back in the game. Here's the rebound, Alain Lemieux is the number two scorer in Fredericton. And the top 
offensive player the last part of the season for them. Mario Lemire's brother. And he's number 31 there as he just picks a loose puck up as for got by Leut and tapped it in. They were ganging the net, of course, with the extra man out there. Lemieux played last season with Quebec through the playoffs, but has spent most of this year with Fredericton, but he's up for this playoff game as the Nordiques run into injuries. And a power play goal by the Nordiques. Lemieux gets it. Picard and Goulet, the assist, 840 the time. A power play goal. Now Tori Robertson feeding it to Ferrero, a Hartford attack. Centered. That bounced crazily in front of the net. Now Wayne Babbitt to Samuelson. Malarchuk a save. And Mike Eagles gets it for the Nordiques. Poking it into center ice. Samuelson knocking it down to Wayne Babbitt to Robertson. Dory Robertson shot wide of the net. Number 17, Wayne Babbitt taken out by Price. Now Ferraro and Moeller battle in the corner for it. And three other players jam up. And then Moeller trying to get into it, I believe, with Wayne Babbitt. Dory Robertson, what happened was the sticks up against the boards kind of got high, and now they're all piling in there. And I, we're going to have a third man situation now. Gillis got in there as well. It started with with Moeller and Babbage. I, I thought it was Babbage, but as I look, it was Ferrero that he was going after, Ron. All right, and Robertson, I think it was his stick that seemed to be up as they were in the corner. And now this has got to be pretty serious stuff. That's Mike Eagles that Robertson has pinned to the ice. He's been in a few fights in this series already. As Gilbert Delorme missed the second game of the, of the series because of an injury he suffered while fighting Robertson. Moeller's the one that's most upset at it all. The rest of it seems to be a lot of holding. But I would think, without assuming too much, that because of the way this has gone, there's a third man situation involved here. Who it is and which team, I don't know. Boy, I'll tell you, Moeller is really incensed. Well, I get Ferraro over towards the penalty box. The referee, Hogarth, gets Ferraro away. Now that's Babbage and Pat Price who have each other in a headlock. We get Ferraro into the penalty box. There's Ferraro having his save from away over there. We still got two people lying on the ice right there with the two linesmen trying to pry them apart. And having a great deal of difficulty doing so. And now oh, that's Troy Robertson who was involved in that one, an eagle. So it's all over. They'll guide him over to the penalty box there and we'll wait for the announcement. It is two to one for the Hartford Whalers. 10:42 left in the first period. This is the NHL on CTV. Spill a cup of coffee, brew into sweater, boss is screaming, send this letter, call Emery, and it's as good as there. Emery's on the case, so you don't have to worry. We go Emery? It's as good as there. Problem, no problem, no problem. I, I know it's getting so to be a busy place, the penalty box, and they figured in all three minutes, uh, three goals scored so far. There's a game the misconduct. Not, you just heard Ron Hogarth say there. I didn't Gillis. catch what the number nothing, was. But take a look at what started this and watch in the bottom part the of your two screen two here. Boswell, two roughing. And. And Robertson, What's started it? Here is Ferraro. Now, Ferraro's number 26. That's Moeller moving in on him. The check up against the boards. Now, watch Ferraro as he comes off the boards. Just that little whack. Seemed to catch the glove of Moeller. Now, that went over to the other side. Now, watch Moeller, number 21 for Quebec, coming in. There he is. Ferraro has lost his helmet at this point, and they go up against the boards. And here's where it all started. Piling in, that was Territory Robertson, number 32, late on the whole situation. Now, there has been a game misconduct call. We'll have to wait the announcement as to which one. There he goes. So it is Moeller who has been given a game misconduct. And I thought he was the first guy. It was the initial business. Let's pick up the PA if we can for the penalty announcement. Two minutes for roughing. Number 21, Randy Moeller. Two minutes for roughing. Two minutes for roughing. A 10-minute misconduct and a game misconduct. That is a serious ejection. 
Hartford penalties on number 24, Tim Bothwell, two minutes for roughing. Number 26, Ray Ferraro, two minutes for roughing. And number 32, Tari Robertson, two minutes for roughing. All right, now, Brad, you're short on defense. You've got an ailing Robert Picard. You don't have a David Shaw. You don't have a Norman Rushmore. And now you lose the best young defenseman you've got in Randy Moeller and you're trying to stay alive in this series. You're going to have to rely very much on your forwards to help out now. You're going to have to, play a, to spend a lot of time in your own end. You've got people who haven't played. DeLorme has got a bad hand. He didn't play in the last game, so he's going to see more ice time, and it's going to affect his puck handling. I think the reason that Moeller got thrown out was because the linesman was trying to contain him, and he shrugged off the linesman, just threw him aside to try to get over to help Eagles, who was underneath of Robertson. So... It wasn't a question of Moeller getting involved with something else. This matter of just manhandling the linesman. I, I think you're right because he, he was given a minor, then a 10-minute misconduct, then the game misconduct. So it was for continuing and not getting away from the fracas. And even more serious than all of this, of course, is Quebec has the extra penalty, and now they're shorthanded. So they are finding themselves in, in a very, very difficult situation. I... Shots on goal right now are Number six apiece. Number 23 goes on the board for the two minutes. Now he's just saying down at the penalty box area that number 23 goes on the board. That would be the... So maybe we won't have a power play situation. Uh, now, yeah, that's right. the penalty to Paul Gillis. It was up Gillis. on the board. All right, that's the Gillis one. I was thinking that 23 for the Whalers is Paul McDermott. He wasn't even on the ice. Hartford scored on a power play by Kevin Deneen, took a 2-0 lead on a shorthanded goal by Dave Tippett, and Quebec came back with a power play goal by Lemieux. Right now, Hartford will be on another power play and leading in this game 2-1. We still have 10-42 left in the second period. There you see Tippett, who scored that shorthanded goal in spectacular style. As we get ready for the faceoff, Going to be Terja with Anderson and Deneen up front. Babbitt and Francis the point man. That's the Hartford power play. They have the man advantage right now as Francis dumps it in. Price is there to clear it away. John Anderson trying to center. Now Price knocking Terja down behind the net. Buck does come in front and Brent Ashton for the Nordique shoots it away. Dave Babbitt back to get it to Ron Francis. Now Terja for Hartford, back to Dave Babbitt. Over onto the other point, it's John Anderson back to Babbitt again. Dave Babbitt tipping it into the zone. Ashton there to clear it away. Quebec shorthanded. And number 10 for Hartford Francis back to pick it up. He feeds it out to Terja. Leaving it for Francis, ahead to Anderson. Anderson centered a shot by Deneen and an excellent save by Malarchuk on Deneen as Malarchuk knew Deneen was there and anticipated well. Quebec cleared away. Francis back to get it. Leaving it there for number 44, Dave Babich. Headmanning it to Evison. He got it into the zone. Silton is there to clear it away. 45 seconds left in the penalty to Gillis of Quebec. Here is Dave Babich. Now to Francis. Tipping it in. Tippett going in after it, but Siltonen gets there first for Quebec and gets it by Babbitt. Here is a race for it, and Hunter gets it. Hunter for Quebec, dropping it back. A shot by Ashton off the side of the net. And Quebec with a shorthanded try. Meanwhile, uh, Pedley now coming up to Hartford. A holding call against David Babbitt. It is 2-1 to one here in the first period for the Hartford Whalers. Ask some mechanics what's wrong with your car, and you might need an interpreter. Well, it looks like maybe a loose Jimson saddle after the sludge pump. Unless it's a torque bindle rotor. And try asking them when your car will be done. Well, let me see. Scamming a bindle rotor could take two, three, even more, and a sludge pump on top of that. Well... But at Canadian Tire, we'll tell you exactly what your car needs and why, with no mumbo-jumbo. It's your alternator. It'll be ready by three. We promise. Canadian Tire, the right choice for auto service, has never been so clear. 
David Babbage upset with himself. Uh, he's off for holding at 11.01. What happened was he got caught flat-footed, and the forward coming up, which was Dale Hunter, got by him and had speed, and he had no chance at all. You can see how he got by Babbage. No chance at all. This is after the bucket hopped over his stick at the other blue line. The only thing he could do is haul him down. Now Ashton moving in had a great chance that rolled off the end of his stick as he was trying for the backhand. Each team a man short for the time being, but when Gillis gets back on in seven seconds, then Quebec will have a man advantage. Here's Lemieux to Pat Price, number seven. Back to Alain Lemieux, number 31. He's had the Quebec goal. Now to Silton it. Bristol Silton it. Couldn't get around Quenville, and then Lyut cleared it away. Here's Goulet. Go back now on a power play, but Samuelson comes up with a loose puck to tip it. He had a breakaway, but the puck skipped over his stick. He was in the clear and onside, but the puck just hopped over his stick. Here's Lemieux. Around on the boards. Now Lemieux gets it again. And back he comes, number 31 for the Nordiques. Uh, he leaves it there. Dostey a shot just wide. Bounces in front, and Samuelson cleared it away. Now DeLorme at the point. Over to Lemieux. Clearing it into the corner. And now Everson comes up with the puck. And Dean Everson, number 12, for the Wetters, who are shorthanded. Moving into the Quebec zone. Trying to drop it back. Now Dale Hunter picking it off, and Quebec start back. Lead pass to Peter Stostick. Dropping it to Hunter to Goulet. He deflected it with a skate. Lyuk stopped it anyway. And then Samuelson cleared it away. Held in at the point by Delore. Shooting it into Peter Stosting. Back to Delore. Shooting Leuta Club save. And he held on to it. And Samuelson and Goulet jam at each other with their sticks. Now in comes Stuart Gavin to push at Goulet. And two other players, Hunter and Kleinendorf, square off. And the linesmen have a busy time right here. While they straighten that out, let's see what else is going on. Here's Dan Matheson. Shorthanded goals seem to be in vogue tonight, Dan, in Boston tonight. The Bruins are on the scoreboard first. Steve Casper at 1756. While the Bruins were man short, they lead Montreal 1-0. Now we'll get more penalties. Meanwhile, a close chance there for Quebec. Nordiques getting uh, their chances in this period. They now have an 8-6 shots on goal edge. This one out in front of the net. Here it comes now as it is blasted in from the blue line. And the glove save is made there. That was a shot taken by Gilbert Delorme, a little closer to the net one we're used to seeing. Here's the penalty coming here as Samuelson comes charging in to check Goulet away from the side of the net. That little extra shot led to a shot by Goulet, and that led to a little bit more, and we wind up with penalties. Slashing penalties to Samuelson and Goulet. Coincidental penalties. Dave Babbage, by the way, still has 26 seconds to serve in his penalty. So it is still Quebec on the power play. Brad, any thoughts from a strategy standpoint that you've observed in the first 13 minutes or so? Hartford seems to be very willing to give Quebec the point shot rather than let Quebec work the puck in around the net. Quebec's problem is they don't have a big, strong, tough guy that's dead center in front of the net. And if they do, who's ever in front of the net is not standing dead in front of Leut, but standing out by the hash marks. It's amazing how difficult a player like that is to find, a guy who's prepared to play, pay the price in there. Of course, now you're battling big defensemen that are equally tough in, in that slot area. Definitely, you also need a big guy that can handle the puck because on the power play, you've got to handle it. It makes Al Secord from Chicago a prime example for the type of person you'd like to have there. Or Tim Kerr. Or Tim Kerr. Puck is cleared by Hartford into center ice. Quebec still in a power play. Bristol Silton in firing it in. Tippett kicking it back, and Tim Bopwell is there. He can't clear it. Now Quebec Ashton getting it in front, but unable to get a shot off was Peter Stosny. He's tied up now. Picard pokes it into the corner. Anton Stosny. Now it comes to Picard, shooting it in behind the net and Liut out of the goal and. The Whalers both will quit it. Peter Stosty knocked it down. Cuts in. Hit the side of the net. Penalty coming up to Hartford. Here's Quebec on the delayed penalty. Getting it to Silton. It. Shooting. He missed by about a foot with that drive. And now as Tippett gets possession, a tripping penalty called against Hartford. And another Quebec power play coming up right here. The 
matter how much you exercise, everyone deserves an exercise in indulgence. With a score candy bar. And one, and two, and... Mmm, crunchy buttery toffee, sumptuous milk chocolate. It's really rich. Look, everyone deserves to indulge themselves once in a while. And when you do, nothing satisfies you like score. Now, back to my workout. Second straight shorthanded situation coming up for the Whalers. The rule of thumb for referees is if it takes a scoring chance away, you have to call the penalty. There's the giveaway on a partially fanned pass. And now as Stosti was moving in unmolested really towards the net, Tippett just got the stick between his legs and hauled him down. And they are shorthanded once again. That comes at the 13-24 mark. Two to one in favor of Hartford. Quebec on another power play, Delorme. Number six moving in from the right point. Trying to get it into the corner. Joel Quenville there to knock it away. Now Delorme again to Dale Hunter. Quenville ties him up. Hunter behind the goal to Lemieux. Lemieux put it in front. Comes to Picard. A shot. That was wide and hit Quenville anyway. And now Stuart Gavin, number seven, gets to center. Picard tying him up. Hunter comes up with the puck, but was stolen back by Gavin. And now Dave Babbitt. Four check by Patrick. Here is Dale Hunter. Over skates it. Now Picard a drive. Up high off the glass and a penalty now coming up against Quebec. And against Dale Hunter. And that will nullify the Nordique power play. Dale Hunter then going in. Here is the action against the boards as Picard has Gavin tied up. Babbage came in, took the puck away, but he is tied up and he is tied up considerably here as Patrick himself kind of lay on top of him wouldn't let him go and then the hook on Gavin as Gavin turned to start to clear it up ice an offensive zone type penalty nullifies a power play advantage and well, Hunter's in there shots on goal at this point favoring Quebec 9 to 8 but it is a 2-1 Hartford Whaler lead and now each team will be a man short a little four on four that we don't see very much of since that rule change this past off season. Here's Cote number 19. Getting the puck into the corner for Stosny. Francis has him tied up. Stosny centered but knocked away by the Whalers. And then Kleinendorf getting it to Ron Francis. And Francis feeds it into center ice. And here's Mike McEwen. Number 25 for Hartford over to Deneen. Got right on Malarchuk, a pad save. And now Mark Kumpel starts back for Quebec. Kumpel number 17. Over to Peter Stosny. Bouncing puck. Stosny now centered. It went off Kumpel and just wide. And Scott Kleinendorf clears it to Deneen, who pokes it into center ice. Silton in for Quebec. To Gillis, number 23. Off the boards to Kumpel. Kumpel shoots one. Liuta stick save. And McEwen and flips it into center ice for Deneen, who leaves it for Francis. Ron Francis for Kevin Deneen. Back to Francis all along. He scores! Beautiful team play between Deneen and Francis. Ever see a better pass in front of the net, Brad, than this one? Nice drop pass here, but watch the give and go in front of the net. There it is. A great goal by Ron Francis, but it was just a simple two-on-two, two, and the Quebec defense did not play it well, leaving Francis alone in front of the net. That's one man who's so talented, you cannot leave him alone like that in front of the net, but it was only a two-on-two, two, and the Quebec defenseman did not play it well. So it is three to one, Hartford. That goal coming with each team a man short. A great combination, Deneen to Francis. Now it is Quebec trailing by two again as Mike Eagles trying to get it to Picard. He's checked and Eagles circles back. Eagles firing it back in and Leut out of the net to knock it away. Passing it over onto left wing and it's now picked up by Everson who gets it into the Quebec zone and Ashton is back to control it for the Nordiques. Off the boards to Eagles. Now McEwen at center ice. Over to Dave Babbitt. Babbitt's number 44. Trying to move in, it comes to McEwen. He held it in, but now Price, an outlet pass, and here's a 
Two on one, nor deep break. Ashton's pass broken up. Ashton gets it again. He scores! Brent Ashton, when his pass didn't get through to Gillis, got the puck back and scores, and Quebec comes right back to narrow the Hartford lead to one goal. Every time you think this game is going to break wide open and become all whalers, they come back, You're showing a lot of grit. Ashton on the two-on-one here. He drops it off, and it looked at that point like the play was all messed up. Ashton's got a great shot, and he threw it past Lee Oud on the short side after getting it back off that rebound. Here it is. He fanned on the first one, not a rebound. He fanned on it and then fired it in. I think Babbage had hit him on either the arm, but whatever, it deflected into the short side. And Ashton with his second goal has again narrowed it to a one-goal game. I think you're right, Ron. I think it did hit Dave Babbage as he went down to try and block it and change directions on Liut. And Quebec come back to cut it to three to two. A shorthanded goal because the Hartford penalized player was back on. Quebec still shorthanded. Their penalized player, Hunter, is back on. So now the teams at full strength. So each team has had a shorthanded goal here in the first period. Here's Anderson shooting it in. Silton is there to clear it right back up. Jim Bothwell flipping it in. Now shot to Cote at center. He couldn't get anywhere. And Pat Price circling in his own zone, working it over onto left wing. And here is a dump in by Gillis for Quebec. Back is Bothwell to clear it. Gillis comes in again, couldn't get it. And Francis breaks out for the Whalers. With Deneen again. Francis shot. This time, Malarchuk a glove save, and he held onto it, and we got a stoppage. Three to two here late in the first period in favor of Hartford. This is the NHL on CTV. Upcoming intermission, we will talk live with the Whalers' outstanding defenseman Dave Babich. David Johnson of the Montreal Gazette will spend two minutes in the press box. We'll also have the highlights and the out-of-town scores. Went Malarchuk, the Nordic goaltender, that last scoring play for Quebec. Brent Ashton is second of the playoffs from Price and Gillis. A shorthanded goal. Here from the faceoff, Babich a shot. That went wide. Each team has had one power play goal and one shorthanded goal here in the first period. Plus the at even strength goal by Ron Francis. Buck is shot in by Dale Hunter in to get it as Goulet. Now the Nordique center, but Quenville was positioned perfectly, and Stuart Gavin gives it to Dean Ebison, number 12, who fires it in for Hartford. Back is Robert Picard. Picard clearing one. Anton Stosny at center on side in the play. Into Dale Hunter. Has a man open in front of the net. Can't get it to him. And coming back with a good play was Samuelson as he tires, ties up Hunter. Anton Stosny now in to help up. Now Dale Hunter getting in a headlock with Samuelson. And then one of the other waiters comes in and takes a shot at Hunter. Well, Hunter up against the board. Samuelson was playing the puck. Hunter decided he was going to start to rough up Samuelson. Samuelson simply skated away from it without doing anything at all. Here it is. Uh, if anything, there might have been a little bit of extra put into this check here, but he missed him. That may have got Hunter going right there. Now comes all of the stuff up against the boards. There's the first punch. Uh, Samuelson still looking for the puck there. As you can see, he's looking down, trying to play it. And here comes the second one. And then finally, Samuelson did get the puck in his skates, and he wound up skating away with the puck. Nothing comes of any of that at all. It'll just be a face-off deep in the Whalers' zone. Brad, the Whalers have had the Nordiques in big trouble a couple of times, but Quebec has hung in. That's the experience of Quebec. They're not going to panic. They'll be down two goals, but they know that they've got some firepower that they don't have to panic. Here's Delorme as Quebec holding the puck in the Hartford zone, but now Tippett tried to clear it. Ashton held it in to Steve Patrick. He's checked and breaking away number 15, Tippett for Hartford. Tippett trying to center. It was deflected, but it went wide as Price had McDermott all tied up in knots in front of that net back as Eagles for Quebec. His shot steered into the corner by Liu. Old Samuelson there to get it. To number 23, Paul McDermott who cleared it into the Quebec zone and now back to the play. A penalty coming up here against the Nordiques. 
A charging call it is. And it is against Steve Patrick, number 25, a charging penalty. Well, this is a little extra. We had the charge by Samuelson, but fortunately, I suppose, for Samuelson, he missed on the check on Hunter. This time, they didn't miss. And Stephen Patrick is off the ice now on the charging call, and the Nordics will play shorthanded with a face-off down in their own zone. Now, the special teams haven't had what you'd call a great night here tonight. Four of the five goals that have been scored. Here comes the charge. There it is, up against the boards. Near the top of the screen. But Patrick's in there. And Hartford with a power play. Each team has had a power play goal. Each team has had a short-handed goal. And the other Hartford goal came with each team a man short. So the Whalers with the man advantage right here. Francis, who's a point man, along with Babich, into Ferraro in the corner, centered. Anderson couldn't get a shot off. Now back on the point to Francis. Into Ferraro. Side of the net. John Anderson, number 20. To Dave Babich. Shoots one deflected. Anderson shot stopped at the defense. Now Dave Babich centers. Anderson shooting. Malarchuk came out. Cut down the angle and made a good save. And then Elaine Cote clears it away. Francis, number 10, back to get it. The Whalers leading 3-2 to two and on a power play. Here's Dave Babich. Into center ice, Anderson in for Ferrero, broken up and cleared by Picard. And back come Quebec. Ashton with a long shot. And Leute handles that, steering it aside for number 20, Anderson, who started this year with Quebec. He loses it. Here's Eagles with a backhander, Leute the save. We're in the final minute of the first period. 3-2 Hartford. Here's Ron Francis. Lead pass to Ferrero, broken up by Picard, cleared out by Eagles. And Francis for Hartford waits for his team to get onside, then feeds Ferrero. Back to Anderson. John Anderson to Ferrero. He scores! Ray Ferrero! Ray Ferrero has always been a great scorer. He got it in a good position to score here as Anderson fed it back to him at the side of the net. Here it comes, great pass and a quick shot. He let it go. Anderson with a back pass. Gets it in front, slips it over, and Ferraro again has scored well over 100 goals in his final junior year with Brandon, or at least uh, out in the West with Brandon. And he just put that one home on the power play again. 20 or 40 seconds remaining in the period. And again, that two-goal lead. Now Quebec trying to battle back once more. Gula into the corner, couldn't center, and McDermott gives it to Doug Jarvis, who clears it into center ice, and Hunter, or at least it is Silton and back to get it. Feeding it into center ice. Gula for Quebec, shot it to the Hartford line, and Doug Jarvis, defensive specialist, cleared it away. Matt Price now trying to get it out of there. Here's Gula. With just 10 seconds left in the period to Silton into center ice to Peter Stostin. He moves in, number 26, Peter Stostin and McDermott came sliding across and covered up and got the puck underneath him and will get a stoppage in play. Ron talked about Ray Ferraro, native of Trail, British Columbia. 108 goals his last year of junior at Brandon. Not only that, 43 power play goals, 15 hat tricks in one year and was named the Western Hockey League's most valuable player that year and uh, was nominated uh, in the running for the Canadian Junior Player of the Year because of that and wound up losing that award to one Mario Lemieux. Just one second, by the way, left here in the period, as you see, that last scoring play, Ferrero from Francis and Anderson at 19.20, a power play goal to make it 4-2 in favor of Hartford. Was well, the time? Did the time click down one or two and seconds? Now Hogarth is questioning the penalty timekeeper. By the way, the off-ice officials here tonight are from Montreal, as is the custom in the Stanley Cup playoffs. The okay. off-ice well, officials are now. always from a neutral city. And, and uh, the complaint has come from the Nordics, please. but I don't think the, there was any countdown. Or it didn't trip down. As Picard was questioning the, the well, gonna, clock. They, are they going to put it back yeah, on? They, they put are, it back to three. Are, are going to, apparently. Now, what happens here is we've got off-ice officials, with the exception of the man who handles the, the electronics down there. They generally remain the home rink, mainly because it's 
their varying styles and setups, like learning a new keyboard, a, a new typewriter. So they leave them. Uh, they, but the rest of them, they people who handle the, the goal. So they pull the goal tender now. So we now we'll get that extra man for the three seconds involved here. By the way, that goal for Ferraro is first of the playoffs. He had a 30-goal season this year with the Whalers. Six attackers with just three seconds left for Quebec in the faceoff in the Hartford zone. Jarvis, one of the best faceoff men in the business, will take it for the Whalers against Peter Stosny. Six attackers for Quebec. The Nordiques get it. It comes to Silton and shoots one. It's wide of the net, but the period was over. Before that shot was unleashed, and then McDermott has some words with Silton, and that's what we have the pushing and shoving about. The first period has ended here in Hartford, Connecticut. Shots on goal, 13 apiece. But Hartford, with Quebec facing elimination, lead the Nordiques after one period, 4-2. to two. Stay with us for our upcoming intermission. This is the NHL on CTV. Wizards, most wizardly wizards there was. We're going to Expo 86 because... How do we get there? What do we do there? Where do I get some oil? Espo! All the stuff you need to know in the free Expo Guide from Esso. Thank you. No trouble. We're going to Expo 86 to see the wizardly wondrous things they'll be. We're out to see the wizards. to experience something extraordinary. A wave of taste that will stretch your imagination. A taste so smooth, so refreshing, so irresistible. Your only choice will be to catch it. Catch the wave. Coke. If you're sitting there wondering why in the world a guy would take his truck to the country club, then I guess you just don't know about this Mazda Cab Plus. The more time I spend around it, the more it just plain knocks me out. Good morning, Mr. Garner. Good morning. When the old clubs aren't back here, there's actually room for two adults facing forward, just like real people. Hey, I don't know how Mazda makes it so roomy and quiet and so much fun to drive and still such a great value for the money. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It might just be the best drive I have all day. Sundays are still commercial free on CFTR. What would you do without commercial free Sundays? Commercial free Sundays, they just make good uh, sense. Commercial free Sundays, only on 680 CFTR. Okay, Will, you're against the system, you're against patriotism. We all know what you're against. Now tell us what you're for. What's the name of your company, Commander? You what? There have been more goals scored in the first period of this hockey game than in either of the first two entire hockey games. Whalers up 4-2 at home, looking to finish off the Quebec Nordiques tonight. Dave Babbage joins us now. He's Whalers outstanding defense, but let me ask you about playoff hockey. Here we are in game three and six goals in 20 minutes of play. Well, I tell you, there's a lot of action out there, and, uh, you know, we're not really looking for that, but, uh, you know, if they score, and we've got to score a couple, that's how we're going to win. They're a little scary, aren't they, though, uh, to get into a shootout. Uh, you don't want to be shooting with the Nordics. Oh, for sure. You know, when you've got a couple stashies out there and you've got Goulet, and, uh, you know, you give those guys a chance, it's going to be almost a, you know, 90% chance of a goal. Uh, but uh, we've got some shooters now. You know, we've got, uh, you know, a couple of guys that don't usually score scoring for us. Uh, you know, Davey Tippett, he's, uh, he's been hot, and Paul McDermott and these guys, and now... Uh, you know, our big guns are scoring, too, so that helps uh, helps a lot. You surprised a few people, I think, going into Quebec and beating the Nordiques twice at home. There aren't many teams do that, and you've got them on the ropes here tonight. What's uh, the Whalers' secret in shutting down the Nordiques' attack? Well, I think, uh, you know, during the season, we um, we were letting the Stashies and, and, you know, their bigger guns uh, come over our blue line. And, you know, when, when they have a two-on-two -two situation or even two-on-one or whatever, they're going to make you look sick. Uh, you know, it's just that European style. But uh, our idea was uh, not to let them have the blue line and try to make them uh, make a play before it. And, you know, hopefully it will be an offside or, or they'll mess up a pass. But uh, that's our idea, and we just got to stay on top of them. Uh, you know, we're giving them a couple of breaks today, but that's got to stop, <laughs> I guess. 
Coming into this game, you have the two-game lead. Uh, there's always the danger of being a little complacent. Uh, how do the Whalers fight that pregame coming in here? Well, I think, uh, you know, talking to all the guys before the game, they're, they're a little more nervous than, than we were the, the first two games. Uh, you know, even myself, I, especially coming home. You know, when you're on the road, you just uh, go out there and do your job, and uh, that, that's all that... that and all you really, want to do is split, too. Oh, that's, that's for sure. Goal. You know, we got a bonus there by uh, winning both games, and now... Uh, you come home, and I tell you, this city is really excited about this. And you know, I'm sure when you guys uh, walk around the, the streets this afternoon, uh, you could see that. Uh, but uh, when they're that uh, that happy for you, you got to make sure you do something <laughs> for them, and they, you know that makes it a little more nervous. I look at the score sheet here: power play, shorthanded, power play, <coughs> shorthanded, power play. Each team a man short. Uh, special teams are almost everything in the playoffs. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know, uh, the last ten games of the season, our, our power play wasn't doing really well. We we're moving the puck well. Uh, you know, we're doing pretty well, everything well except scoring. Now uh, we are scoring, and look, we got a shorthanded goal. So did they, but, uh, you know, they got a good, uh, <laughs> you know, a good penalty killing unit too. But, uh, you know, that is playoffs right there. And, you know, by that sheet there, you can see that's playoff hockey. Dave, I need one quick answer here. Uh, the rest of the way, do you try to shut them down with a two-goal lead, or do you just keep this up? Well, you just got to keep it up. You know, it, uh, you, you can't let them, like I said, you have them, let them get the blue line or shoot it in and, and start jumping on you. You know, if you s just start shooting out to, to mid-ice, they're just going to come back and, and, you know, they're going to get their chances. So we got to keep going, and, and that's the way the guys feel about it. Okay, thanks very much. Dave Babbage, this is Carney O'Keefe Sports, the Stanley Cup playoffs on CTV. At this time of year, on TV, radio, and in the papers, everybody's making a lot of noise about sales. Mazda dealers don't shout deals, they make deals that are consistent, great values. Like the all-new Mazda 323. Right now, we have a fine selection of this roomy, quiet-riding, small road car. So now is your best time to buy. Great values don't need screaming and shouting. Come and get a great Mazda value today. Because at your Toronto-area Mazda dealers, we deliver a good deal more. In the world of business, working hard is no longer enough. You have to work smart. At Bell, we can show you how our knowledge, experience, and new ideas can make you more effective and more profitable. We can show you how a properly integrated office system can give you the competitive edge. Bell. Office integration made easy. It's our case when it's a crowd. It's our taste when there's no one around. Getting together and having fun. Kentucky Fried Chicken's the one. It's our taste that makes us famous. It's our taste that you all love. It's our taste when you're getting together. It's our taste when we're having fun. It's our taste that makes us famous. You know this man, the lonely repairman. He stands for Maytag dependability. And you know this man, Michael Bell of the Brick Warehouse. He stands for guaranteed lowest prices. Now, get the best of both. Maytag washers, dryers, and dishwashers at guaranteed lowest prices. And now till April 21st, put nothing down. Do not pay anything till July 31st, 1986, and pay no interest on all Maytag appliances. This limited time offer only from Canada's largest Maytag dealer, the Brick. Hi, I'm David Johnson of the Montreal Gazette. A short four days ago, people in Quebec City were talking about La Belle Rêve, the beautiful dream. For this was to be the year that the Nordiques, the only team to beat the Soviet Red Army at Christmas, would challenge the Edmonton Oilers for the Stanley Cup. But the Nordiques are down 2-0 in this series, and the dream is rapidly becoming a nightmare. The Hartford Whalers, meanwhile, instead of turning into pumpkins, are wearing glass slippers. As much as I admire the Whalers, I'm disappointed in this series. I want the Nordiques to win it because I think a healthy Quebec club would have a chance against Edmonton. And, I must stress, I want Edmonton thrown out as champions. I don't know about you, but I think you have to judge the merit of a Stanley Cup champion by what it does for your country in international competition. The Oilers let down Canada when they lost 6-3 to the Red Army late last December. And none of the Oilers who played for Team Canada in the last Canada Cup were particularly good either. Until Gretzky and the rest of the Oilers do something for this country on an international stage, I'm uncomfortable with the idea of them holding the Stanley Cup. The Oilers remind me of boxer Larry Holmes, all those wins and records achieved on the backs of inferior competition. Holmes was never that good. He simply boxed in an era when the talent pool was shallow. Put the Oilers against the Canadians of the late 70s or the Islanders of 
four years ago, and they'd lose a best of seven series in five games. Having covered the first two games of this series, I can't say I'm surprised that the Quebec Nordiques trail by two. Before the start of the series, the first place Nordiques were strutting about Quebec City, wallowing in self-absorption. All they wanted to do was talk about themselves. They've taken the Hartford Whalers for granted, and now they face elimination. If there's a message in this series for all of us, it is this. Never become so self-absorbed by your own success that you turn a blind eye to your competition. Because your competition is carrying a silver hammer, and he's creeping up behind you to go bang, bang on your head. In the Nord Nordiques case, it's a real shame. Because we tend to overestimate what the Oilers mean to Canada, just as many people overestimated Larry Holmes. Hi, sis, do here. How's Sam? Don't talk, just listen. Peg's fine. Kids are cool. Kathy played a cabbage in the school play. Extremely cute. Billy found the dog. Had puppy. Seven big puppies. Spots, bike, tug, kiss, windy, rover, and vince. Kids ate my shoes. Both of them. Hungiest little guy I ever saw. You know, Some people thought... still believe long distance is expensive. But did you know a five-minute call between Toronto and Ottawa costs two eleven or less after 6 p.m.? I know people there. Did you know for two twenty one or less, you can call most places in Ontario and Quebec? But I know people all over. Don't save it up. Talk it up with Bell. Hey, sis, talk to me. Good day. Always wanted to see Canada. The wildlife. The sport. The scenery. And there was one thing missing for me. Now it's here, so I'll mine. Foster's Lager. <laughs> Australia's ace of parody. Ripper. Bit Foster's, Pete. Ah, uh, and that must be the call of the wild. <laughs> Foster's, Australian for beer. Now brewed here. Ask some mechanics what's wrong with your car, and you might need an interpreter. Well, it looks like maybe a loose Jimson saddle adapted to the sludge pump. Unless it's a torque of bindle rotor. And try asking them when your car will be done. Well, let me see. Scamming a bindle rotor could take two, three, even more, and a sludge pump on top of that. Well... But at Canadian Tire, we'll tell you exactly what your car needs and why, with no mumbo-jumbo. It's your alternator. It'll be ready by three. We promise. Canadian Tire, the right choice for auto service, has never been so clear. Boy, it isn't easy being your television set. Back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes I wish my tune would fall off. Now, if you got TV Guide, we could plan our time together. It's a real magazine, not just a TV supplement stuck into a newspaper. TV Guide has lots of interesting articles and a big video section each week. And it's critical. It says what's hot and what's not. You can trust it. And trust is something you don't mind paying for. Hartford Whalers leading two games to nine, lead 4-2 over Quebec. First period, Kevin Deneen, Dave Tippett made it 2-0 Whalers, and Lionel Lemieux got the Nordiques on the board. Ron Francis made it 3-1. Fred Ashton made it 3-2, and then Ray Ferrero restored the Whalers' two-goal lead. That's how we sit, getting ready for the second. Shots on goal in that first period, dead even at 13 apiece. Brad Park joins us now with his highlights and his analysis, and you're going to talk a little bit about defensemen and mistakes and tension in the playoffs. All the playoffs bring a lot of tension. They bring a lot of mistakes. But they also bring some individual hustle out there. And we're going to have a good look at uh, some of these things. We're also going to key on the Quebec power play and also uh, some great plays. One thing we're going to look at right now, we're going to look at some great hustle by Dale Hunter. And it was a play where the puck was shot around the boards. And Dave Babbage has a tough time handling it. Now, Hunter just hustles by him and actually outmuscles him. Now, Hunter is not as big as Babbage, and Babbage has to reach around with his left hand and pull him down. And Hunter drops it off to Ashton, who didn't get a good shot away. On the other hand, we talk about nervousness. Well, this is a Quebec power play. Watch it go into Peter Stastny, the guy they want to get the puck to. He'll drift by. Watch Picard come into the screen. There's the shot. Goulet is in front. It squirts over to Lemieux on your right, and he jams it home. But the assassin was the key on that because he's the guy they've got to get to move the puck. Here's a look at the Hartford power play. It goes in basically the same type of play. They're moving it around. It goes over to the point. Here's a shot. Malarchuk is right there, but it comes across. A lot of scrambling in and around the front of the net, but you're getting those good point shots from both people. Now here's the shot. Watch Silton. He had his man at the side. Silton could not move from the side and let that guy go. He had to let Larchuk play that shot. Now, this is what mistake by the defense. Early in the game, Anderson gets loose, makes the pass in, and they have to haul. There's Picard making a hook check on them, pulling uh, Francis down. 
but the defense are closing the gap too much. And when they close the gap like that, they're really anxious, not checking. Here's that two-on-two -two we talked. Watch Francis drop it. The Quebec defense, nobody takes Francis. They both go for the play. Francis ends up on front all alone. He just tucks it away. Whalers are pumped up. They are leading, and they are healthy. You're the Quebec coach. What do you do now? You are not healthy, and you're behind. Well, you've got to realize that the, you've still got two periods to go. It's not like you've got one period to go. You've got time. You've got to chip away at them. 4-2 after one period of play. We will have the out-of-town scoreboard when we come back. This is Crying Key Sports, the Stanley Cup playoffs on CTV. The age of battery flashlights is over. Introducing the first alert. Rechargeable flashlight. The powerful new flashlight that never needs batteries. The first alert. Rechargeable flashlight is always bright because it has a unique power plug for easy recharging and a Krypton bulb for a powerful beam. Get the new first alert. Rechargeable flashlight. CFTR's commercial free Sundays. Don't you just love them? What? You say you haven't heard of CFTR's commercial free Sundays? Well, once you hear commercial free Sundays, you'll be hooked. Sundays are still commercial free on 680 CFTR. Mmm, these are really light and crispy, but at times I'd like a hearty chip. Let Johnny do super frills. Hey, these are super thick and crunchy with a really big taste. Where can I get more? Johnny! Frills and new super frills made from our choice potatoes for that bigger than life taste. What's the best tasting potato chip? Frills! Super frills! Have a Humpty Dumpty day. Announcing a special offer at Wendy's. Another burger offer. Whoopee! But our offer starts with a quarter pound of fresh ground beef. Okay, Wendy's, the fresh part, I'll give you. Served hot off the grill with processed cheese and crisp bacon. A bacon cheeseburger? Oh, Wendy's, you're reaching me. Then we top it with your choice of fresh toppings. And the offer? Just $1.49 when you purchase regular fries. Wendy's Bacon Cheeseburger. For a limited time, only $1.49. Hi, I'm Don Chevrier. Join me in Toronto when the Blue Jays hit the field for another sensational home opener here on CTV, Canada's Blue Jays Network. The winner of the Quebec Hartford series will go on to meet the winner of the Montreal Boston series. And that one is now 1-1 second period in Boston. Claude Lemieux has scored for the Canadians. They lead the series, however, two games to none. We go to the Patrick Division. No score yet uh, in on the Rangers and the Flyers. They're playing in New York tonight. That series deadlocked at a game of peace. But on the island, Rod Langway in the first period, Scott Stevens in the second, both on the power play, have given the Capitals a 2-0 second period lead, and they lead the series 2-0. Norris Division. Russ Cortnell's goal in the first period for the Maple Leafs has them in front of the Chicago Blackhawks, 1-0 in Toronto. Leafs could eliminate the Hawks tonight. No scoring yet from St. Louis, where the North Stars and Blues are underway. They are deadlocked at a game of peace. In the Smythe, Mark Messier has made it 1-0 Oilers in Vancouver. They could wrap it up. And in Winnipeg, it is the Calgary Flames and the Jets. No score yet reported. Here and following tonight's telecast, the Carling O'Keefe Sports Offensive and Defensive Game Stars will receive a Royal Canadian Mint one ounce gold coin presented by the Continental Bank. Turning the wheels of business with innovative financial services for. Talk to Continental Bank of Canada. Bankers in action. Time now for our Carling O'Keefe Sports play of the period. It was the second goal. This made it two to nothing. Tippett breaking away on the, the pass from Samuelson. Gets by Malarchuk, who hesitated coming out of the crease. Peter Stasny back to check. Just overskated Tippett. And meanwhile, Malarchuk trying to scramble back into the crease and just failed to make the save. That made it two nothing. But now as we enter the second period of play here at the Hartford Civic Center, it is four to two. Hartford leading the Nordic. And the Nordiques have made a goaltending change. Mario Gosla takes over from Flint Malarchuk as his second period gets underway. There you see Mario's record, 14-14-1, a 3.86 goals against average. He was the big 
noise for Quebec a year ago in the playoffs. And he is a good goaltender, too. This is an area in which they are very strong uh, in the net. And I don't think this has got anything to do with the way that first period was played by Malarchuk. I think it has a lot to do with just trying to change the atmosphere out there, make it a little different. Maybe the team will play a little bit better in front of Goslam. And right off the bat, Mario has to come out and sweep a puck away. And here comes Goulet at center ice to Kumpel. Kumpel leaving it for Goulet. Goulet put it right through the crease with a backhander. Now Pat Price at the point, trying to hold it in. Does to Goulet behind the net. Goulet gets it in front, but Samuelson for Hartford, feeding it to Evison, number 12. He gets it in for Stuart Gavin, but that whole play is offside at the Quebec blue line. And we'll get a stoppage there. Brad, the Quebec Nordiques have made a goaltending change. Any thoughts on that strategy? I thought Malarchuk looked a little shaky in the first period. He, he wasn't out on some of the shots, and he was still juggling his feet when the puck was on the way of the net. And I think that Michel Bergeron probably saw that, and it's also a shakeup for his hockey club. Faceoff will be at the Quebec line. We're early in the second period. Four to two, the score in favor of Hartford. Go back with a line of Gillis, Cote, and Eagles against the Jarvis, Tippett, and McDermott line for Hartford. Here's Eagles. He's tied up, and now they puck loose in center, and Eagles shoots it in for Quebec. The Ute leaving it for Klein endorsed out to Tippett. Head manning it to Doug Jarvis, number 27, and he just fires it into the Quebec zone. Here's McDermott. Two goal man in game two for Hartford. Trying to center one. Now Picard tying McDermott up out in front of shot. Big save, Goslaff. On Tippett, who was alone in the slot. And Mario Goslaff comes in cold and comes up big. This will be an icing call against Quebec. A little native of Thetford Mines, Quebec. Mario Goslaff with a big save. And now we have Gillis pinned in against the boards as he and one of the Whalers would like to get at each other. Hartford player being restrained, by the way, and taken over towards the penalty box. We'll have penalties here, or will we? Klein endorsed is the Hartford man involved. 4-2 early in the second period in favor of Hartford. Ten years ago, a big engine job used to cost this much money. Five years ago, this much. Today, this much. So now it's even more important to take care of your car right, including changing your oil, putting in a new Fram oil filter when you're supposed to. After all, a Fram filter doesn't cost much. A big engine job does. But the choice is yours. You can pay me now or pay me later. Scott Kleinendorf's in the penalty box. He's in there along with Gillis, each of them off for roughing. Kleinendorf's one of brothers that played with this team. Kurt also with the team in the past. And so it's even, and that means everybody's out there at full strength. But now there's a gathering of the group down near the goal mouth of the Nordiques. And I think there's equipment problems or something down there. Gosselin trying to get his equipment ready and now is set. By the way, Mr. Roos, what did you think of David Johnson's comments on his press box editorial about various things in the NHL, including the Edmonton Oilers. I disagree completely. Well, I think Edmonton's one of the best teams I've ever seen. Well, they are. I think it's because of the great players they have, and how many great teams can you think of to have six or seven great players on them? We're underway again as Terjean moves in for Hartford. Trying to center. Hunter breaks that up and tries to fire it out of there. Held in again by the Whalers. Sylvie Terjean can't get around Price. Now here's Evison centering it into the slot. Goslack, clear that away. Just in time. Terjean trying to center. And now Kumpel for Goulet as Quebec come back. Goulet firing it in. And Liut out of the net to feed it around on the boards to Terjean. Hunter into four check on him. Now Wenville feeding it into center ice. And here comes Dave Babbitt for the long shot. That's just wide of the net. And Gord Donnelly tips it to Anton Stasny. Intercepted by Anderson in the clear. Shooting, he missed by a couple of feet. Anderson with a great chance. Another shot. They go! Samuelson from the point. It's 5 to Hartford. Number five shot. I don't know if it's tipped or not. Not much of a shot. 
but I don't think that Gus Lance saw it. Here it comes for the blue line. See the crowd in front. He reacted late, and it got by him. I'm not sure if it was tipped by one of those whalers in the line of fire or not. But if couldn't. not, Donnelly certainly screened Gosselin on the play. Well, there were about three that were crisscrossing in front of the path of the puck. Nobody touched it, in, in my view, uh, unless it was just simply such a small touch, which is all it takes, really, that we couldn't see it on a replay. Samuelson gets the goal, and the Whalers have a three-goal lead as Quebec banked out of their own zone, led by Peter Stostin. He drops it back. There is a shot blocked at the defense by Bothwell. And then Quebec clear at the center ice. Picard with it there to number 34, Donnelly. Into Anton Stosny, to Peter Stosny, to Ashton. But he was upended in front of the net. And Tim Bothwell of Hartford will get a penalty right here. Five to two, Hartford leading. This is the NHL on CTV. When the Toronto Chrysler dealers asked me to do commercials, I thought, great. New car every week, dinner with Lee Iacocca. Now they tell me they haven't got a lot of money. No wonder, they're giving it all away. With these special edition K-Cars, you get a $500 rebate, or low 9.9% .9 financing, plus automatic transmission or air conditioning at no extra cost. You could save a bundle. And of course I get lunch. Is Mr. Iacocca here yet? Your two good old price for dealers. We Another power play situation coming up for the Nordics. Tim Bothell in for interference. Here it is, as in front of the net, Bothell, uh, he had his man, he had a line on his man, uh, and he almost stumbled over the leg. I'll tell you one thing about Ron Hogarth in this game, and maybe his birthday, but he's not ready to give anything. He is calling it very close. And last scoring play, Samuelson is first to the playoffs from Anderson. To give Hartford a 5-2 lead. Now the Whalers shorthanded. Clear it down the ice and chasing back after it is Bristol Silton in for Quebec. The Nordiques are 2 for 12 on the power play in this series. Buck shot in by Silton. Leut flipping it. Gets it up high but knocked down by a high stick by Quebec. And that stops play. And the faceoff will come all the way back into the Quebec into the rink because of that High stick by that man right there, Alain Lemieux. Well, Lemieux, as you mentioned, is Mario Lemieux's older brother, was the second top scorer in Fredericton. He had 29 goals and 45 assists down there. They brought him up along with Gord Donnelly simply for, in the case of Lemieux, his offensive ability. They're getting a little short in that department. He can, he can do some of those things. Not the greatest skater, but he has good hands and a, and a bit of a touch. Here is Lemieux against Jarvis on the faceoff, and Quebec win it and break out, led by Goulet to Peter Stosny, or to Anton it was. He's checked, and now the puck goes back, and Lemieux has to chase back to get it. Quebec on a power play. Bothwell is off for Hartford. Here's Lemieux shooting it in. Digging in on left wing is Patrick. Around onto the other side, but Stuart Gavin is there, and he shoots it away for Hartford. And Silton has to go back. Silton and acquired from Hartford for John Anderson right at the trading deadline. Up the middle to Solve. He was stopped now a drive by Ashton just wide. Anton Stosny trying to center. But Stuart Gavin battling on the boards comes up with the puck and Everson then shoots it away. And Peter Stosny has to go back. 40 seconds left in the Hartford penalty. Peter Stosny to Solve. Sliding it into Anton Stosny. Dave Babich is there. And the big, strong Whaler defenseman works it to Tippadu. Shoots it away. Silton and again back for Quebec. Number 12, Bristol Silton into number 9, Brent Ashton. Through the defense and on goal. Samuelson came diving across to make a big defensive play. And now Tippett breaks out for Hartford. Tip it into center ice to Samuelson, who fires it in. And going back to get it is Silton, and Bothwell is back on. And Quebec clear it down the ice, and as Joel Quenby, it didn't go all the way. And now they rule it did go all the way, and it's an icing call. 
against Quebec. A big defensive gem moments ago by Alf Samuelson. Looked like 10 pin bowling there. He went sliding through the slot area, took everything in sight with him, but it was a good play. It was Ashton who made a good play breaking in. Now he's going to get to his feet and get his balance, but here comes Samuelson. And everybody went flying with that one as he just cleared the slot area. Five to two, Hartford leading. Samuelson, I guess if you look back, uh, he's got a bit of a reputation for carrying a stick high. We find that a few of the young players coming into the league, and they can't certainly pinpoint only Swedes because it happens with juniors coming out now, too. But he's picked up a reputation simply because you're not used to seeing Swedes play at that tough. Here is a puck cleared near the Whaler blue line. Mike McEwen trying to clear it out, held in by Kote, but covering up on the play and getting it out of there was Kleinendorf. Now Hartford with Wayne Babbage over to number 26, Ferrero, who shoots it in. Wayne Babbage in to get it. Babbage centered one, Babbage again. Wayne Babbage back on the point to Kleinendorf. Hartford, Ferrero centered, poked just wide by Ferrero. Now here's Wayne Babbage. Into the corner to Tory Robertson. Robertson. Well, Hartford leading here five to two. Gets it to Wayne Babbage. Babbage into the corner, taken out along the boards by Delorme, and then Quebec breakout and feed it to Robert Picard, number 24. A special welcome, by the way, to our Calgary and Winnipeg audience who have just joined us here in Hartford, where the Whalers lead Quebec five to two, with Quebec facing elimination. Hartford on the attack, moving in, a pass to Wayne Babbitt, who fanned on it, and then Quebec's Dale Hunter drops it to Gord Donnelly. Now out on right wing, the Nordiques on the attack. Here is Goulet with a shot. And Leuda glove save on Goulet. Back comes Gavin, couldn't get it out. Dale Hunter holding it in. Trying to get it to Goulet. Samuelson is there to knock it down. And then Gavin cleared it to center. Here's Kerja spun around by Donnelly. Up. Hartford shoot it into the Quebec zone. And Mario Gosla, who took over at the start of this period in goal, for Quebec cleared it away. Dale Hunter back in the corner, couldn't clear it. Here's Everson shooting one off the shoulder of Gosla. Now Terja centers one. Comes to the point. Dave Babbitt with a high backhander. Dropped or blocked by Dale Hunter. Hunter can't clear it, and then Hunter just fell and fell on top of the puck. Five to two here in the second period in favor of Hartford. This is the Stanley Cup playoffs on CTV. Today, she reminds me of back home. The only thing we like better than getting out in the water for a bit of a spin is getting back on the dry land. Never panicked about it, though. Always knew there'd be a drop of the amber nectar waiting for us. Foster's Lager. You can get Foster's in Canada now, and they won't sting you any more than they do for your regular brew. Ah, uh, Ripper. Mind you, in Oz we tend to take things a bit easier. We like to hollow the canoes out first. <laughs> Foster's, now brewed here. Coach of the Hartford Whalers, Jack Evans, in his first NHL playoff as a coach. He had the California Seals and he had the Cleveland Barons, which were the same team once removed. And he, I guess, got the eye of Emil Francis and wound up coaching his minor league teams. Dave Babbage's shot turned aside by Goslaw. And now Siltonen clearing it out to Peter Stosny. To Gillis at center. Stosny back out as the winger. Here's a pass to Picard into Ashton. Ashton trying to center and Gillis couldn't handle it. Back comes Francis. Three on two. Hartford break. Ron Francis dropping it to Anderson. Goslaw the save. He looked in behind him but it made the save. And Siltonen right back for Quebec. Tilton and leaving it to Ashton. Babbage ties him up. Now John Anderson trying to clear it out of there for Francis. Missed him with the pass. And as Delorme goes back to touch it, this will be icing against the Hartford Whalers. Just to finish off the thought there, as we look at number six, Gilbert Delorme for the Nordiques. Uh, Jack Evans coached the minor league team for the St. Louis Blues in Salt Lake City and won the Central League Championship as the coach there two times in a row. And that's what I think it was one of the things that started Emil Francis when he came over to this Hartford franchise into thinking they might be the man for him. Now, again, we've said that 
Evans is one of those very quiet men that doesn't say an awful lot, and for that reason, some people think he's not a very good coach. I think a lot of that opinion is changing. Here's Pat Price for Quebec, shoots one. Stopped at the defense. Now Lemieux trying to kick at it. He has no stick. And Jarvis comes up with it for Hartford. Price held it in. Price checked by McDermott. Here's Tippett trying to break away. But a good play by Anton Stosny to take it away from him. Now Samuelson cleared it into center ice. Whalers, Paul McDermott just golfs it into the Quebec zone. Gilbert Delorme back for Quebec to Cote number 19. Into center ice to Anton Stosny. Checked by Gavin. And it's dumped back in by Hartford with Price back to pick it up. Over to Delorme. Head Manning to Anton Stosny. Now to Cote, number 19. Alain Cote. Taken out of the play by Samuelson. Now Anton Stosny couldn't center in Gavin for Hartford. Clearing it, Gord Donnelly held it in. And the Nordiques try and center, but Everson is there to intercept and come to center. And now Hartford moving in deeper. Terzhaw centering pass knocked away. And back comes Goulet to Kumpel, who pokes it into the Hartford zone. Kleinendorf back after it. This pass to Terzhaw, number 16. He handed the puck right to a Quebec player, but Gavin gets it back for Hartford and shoots it out of there. And Silton is back for Quebec. We're almost halfway through regulation time. Here's Goulet for the Nordiques with a long shot. The Ute handling that. McEwen then cleared it, and here's John Anderson for Hartford. At center to Kevin Deneen, number 11. Into Ron Francis. Francis, Anderson, and Deneen on the ice for the Whalers. But the Quebec Nordiques are able to clear the puck into center ice. And Deneen then trying to shoot it in, shot it up over the glass. 10.34 left in the second period. This is the NHL on CTV. My competitive edge, customer service nationwide through telemarketing. Glad to be of help. It's that simple. Here, Chief. A customer service? Uh, your filbert flange won't mesh with your grapple grommet. No problem. Won't we? See, a satisfied customer is a repeat customer. You're welcome. We make grapple grommets? 23,000 a day. Awesome. Telemarketing. Today's way to operate. Last time we checked in with the Montreal-Boston score, the Bruins were behind, but now they're in front on goals by Reed Larson and Keith Crowder. Larry Murphy's put the Washington Capitals in front of the Islanders 3-0. That's in the second period. And in Winnipeg, Calgary 2-1. Doug Reisbrow, Joe Mullen for the Flames. Ray Neufeld has replied for the Jets. Here it is, 5-2, midway through the second period in favor of Hartford. Go back on the attack. Peter Stosny, short side, saved by Leute. Now it's Ashton in the corner, but he's pinned there by Dave Babich and will get a stoppage and a face-off in the Hartford end of the ring. We talked about the problems that Peter Stosny has right now. He suffered a, a bout with the flu and then came down with tonsillitis. And apparently the double bout, the, the two back-to-back, -back really depleted his iron content in his blood. They took a blood test on him. I guess if you were a racehorse, you'd stop him. You'd put him out on the field and... Let them rest for a while, but you don't do that. I guess if you're a human being, they send you out there and make you play in the Stanley Cup playoffs, especially if your team faces elimination and you're the type of player that Peter Stosny is and loves and wants to play the game. But he is apparently at a very low iron content. His blood anemic, and uh, he's going to have a summer before he'll get rid of that problem. Buck is cleared away by Hartford. Silton and back to get it. To Patrick into center ice. Now Patrick, number 25. Trying to move around the defense, but Dave Babbage took him out of the play. Now Peter Stosny unable to center. And Hartford come back, led by Ron Francis to Denis. Poking it over onto the wing to John Anderson. Back to Francis, shooting off the goal post. Francis hit the post dead on with that shot. And now Ashton comes back for Quebec to Peter Stosny. Quebec trailing by three. Peter Stosny flipping it through. Miss Pat Price with it. Price goes back to get it. Into Eagles in the corner. Now to Peter Stosny. Now to Eagles. Jarvis hucks him down. He'll get a penalty here. Doug Jarvis will go to the penalty box, and we'll have a Quebec power play coming right up. This is the NHL on CTV. 
boy, it isn't easy being your television set. Back and forth, back and forth. Sometimes I wish my tune would fall off. Now, if you got TV Guide, we could plan our time together. It's a real magazine, not just a TV supplement stuck into a newspaper. TV Guide has lots of interesting articles and a big video section each week. And it's critical. It says what's hot and what's not. You can trust it. And trust is something you don't mind paying for. For a defensive kind of a player, Doug Jarvis, as we mentioned earlier in the game, doesn't get a lot of penalties. 36 minutes total this year. Here he gets the stick up and draws his second penalty in the game. And I can't remember having seen Doug play many years in Montreal. Well, certainly I can count on my two hands the number of games, and he's played 800 and whatever it is now straight, that he's got two penalties in the game. Here's the Quebec power play. They trail five to two with Ron Roche and Brad Park and Dan Matheson. This is Dan Kelly in Hartford, Connecticut, where the Whalers have Quebec on the ropes. They won the first two games and they lead this one five to two. Quebec will operate on a power play right here. Lemieux on a face off and the puck comes to Silton and now into the corner. But Joel Quenville gets it for Hartford and fires it over onto the boards. Evison couldn't clear it out, but Quenville did. And Siltonen has to go back. Siltonen to Hunter. Now to Picard. Siltonen and Picard, the point man, with Goulet, Hunter, and Lemieux up front. Here is Robert Picard, number 24. Firing it in. Leute missed it. Here's a shot. Leute gets back in, made the save. The red light is on, but I don't think that puck ever went into the net. I think the puck came across the crease, hit the post, and then Leut was able to grab it. But the red light did come on. And went off. That's one of the Montreal neutral off-ice officials that are here. And he is nodding as if he said it went in the net. I don't think it did either, Dan, looking as we are from way above the ice surface. And again, Leut, I think it was very lucky, and I don't think he ever grabbed it. I think it just slid under him. Now, Ron Hogarth, what got a way to spend convoy. your birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Ron. He has got both Stasny and Francis over the there. Phones. Has he got the phones down there? I can talk to him. I've got to talk to him. All right, the reason they have the phones yeah. is you can't talk through the glass. He wants uh, to talk to the gold jet. That's right. He, so he wants, they, what they've got is walkie-talkies. And so they're, he's going to talk to the gold judge and find out what actually happened there now the goal judge himself nodded as if it was in the net and but again he's got to get to a phone I guess there it is down at the end of that seating area either that or he's going to walk around I think he's just going to walk to the uh, to the gate to the gate where Hogarth will meet him now we don't have a mic in that area so we're just going to have to read lips a little bit and see what he says as we have mentioned, the off-ice officials are from Montreal, as they are in all Stanley Cup playoff series, neutral off-ice officials. Uh, the light went on, but it went off again very quickly, and it just might have been a quick trigger. Brad? The one point is we talked about neutral officials. I don't know if I'd call the officials from Montreal kind of neutral in a <laughs> Quebec series. We had a, a situation in New York the other night where the, one goal judge at one end of the ice in the Ranger Philadelphia game had three goals go in and he didn't call any of them. And they, and all of the replays showed that they went in. Finally, Ron Wicks called the third one, which went right through the net. And today we had talked to Ron Hogarth about the, the new camera that they were experimenting with in Cincinnati regarding uh, replays of possible goals. I don't think uh, at that overhead camera would really help in this situation because the puck went under Leute and he was laying with his head across the goal line. All right, uh, I'll tell you something, Brad. I, I have seen what is the presentation tape that has been made, uh, which is going to be presented to the league on, on this overhead camera, and it would have, as a matter of fact, uh, demonstrated clearly what happened there. And I've gone from being a person who believed firmly that there should be no... Apparently it is the Quebec goal from the reaction of the Nordiques. All right, now we'll get a chance and we'll see here. As back to get it there is Quenville. 
comes across the goal mouth. Now we lose sight of it. Now the goal, there it is, out in front of the crease now. It has not gone in the net at that point. Still hasn't gone in the net. Hand on the puck in the crease, Quenville, but he slid it in to Liut. Didn't cover it up. And at this point, as far as I'm concerned, it hasn't gone in the net. Now here's maybe a better view. Comes across the line. Still is out of the goal mouth area. Now it's going to go out in front of the crease there. There it is lying there. He slid it into Liut. And the light is on at that point. Now the only point where it could have gone in is right at the corner of the net to the right. Now look at this area, right to the corner of the net. This is the only place where it could have gone in. It comes across the goal mouth. Liut scrambling to get back in. Hits his skate. Where is it now? It's under, under his, his skate. Right it skate. has not gone in the net. It did not go into the net. With three angles, we could show it. But Hogarth and the goal judge have consulted, and he has awarded a goal to Quebec. And from all the replays that we have seen, the puck did not go into the net. Dan, that is such a big goal at this stage in the hockey game because if the Hartford Whalers can walk out of here with a three-goal lead, they're going to dominate the third period. But this brings it back within range of the Northeast. The puck did not go into the net. I think what he may have seen, the goal judge at one point, was Liut's stick in the net. Definitely. And the black tape on Liut's stick could give anybody an impression that the puck was in the net. Now watch the huge stick go in because the puck doesn't. Watch the light though too. Right above, right, right above uh, Goulet there is the light. There, there it is. goes. The puck is at the corner of the net there now and it did, on that low angle replay we, we know that it didn't go in the net at that time. Now as I was going to say, I've seen the presentation film of the National Hockey League is going to be seeing their governors and, and general manager going to be seeing about the Indianapolis experiment over the the cameras. Now they're going to be, a, the way they would like it is a, a camera above each net. And I have gone from a person who firmly believed that the human aspect of the game should never be taken away, that electronics should never uh, officiate a game, to somebody who believes that it should. Because I think that that system works. And uh, I don't know what the league is going to do when after they see the, the video, but I have a feeling they're going to move in that direction. The goal that wasn't is credited to Dale Hunter, a power play goal. Picard and Sultan in the assist, 11.06 the time. That cuts the Hartford lead to 5-3. To and here we go again with play underway as Francis tries to move it in. Getting it into Deneen. Deneen checked before he could shoot. Now Goslas lost his goal stick. Buck centered. Samuelson, or at least it's held in by the the Frenchman Quenville and now Quebec break out as Peter Stosny moves into the Hartford zone. Stosny shooting. Liu turned that aside. And now Dave Babich firing it into center ice. Deneen knocking it down. Deneen headmanning it to Anderson. John Anderson taken out by Cote. And then it's shot to center and picked up by Quebec. Peter Stosny for the Nordiques trying to drop it back. And it comes to center ice and Picard has it there. Shooting it in, Tim Bothwell getting it. Bothwell, clearing it to the Nordique line. DeLorme shot it back. Here comes Anderson the other way for Hartford. Anderson shoots one. Dostla the save, and DeLorme comes up with the rebound and works it over to Patrick. Steve Patrick clips it to center. And the puck comes to the Hartford line with Samuelson back after it. Firing to McDermott. He missed it, but Jarvis gets it. Now Lemieux. Checked by Jarvis. Kicked along the boards, taken by Ashton, and Ashton fires it in. Leute out of the goal to grab it and then fire it over onto the boards to Dave Tippett. Tippett number 15, Hartford leading by two here in the second period. Here's Jarvis through center. Into the Quebec zone, center deflected. Gosselin just got a piece of that deflection by Tippett. Now McDermott trying to kick it along the boards. Here's Jarvis, centered one. And then Hogarth taken out of the play. And then play is called as all heck breaks loose. The Hartford player who ran into Hogarth gave Hogarth a shove. He thought he was a Hartford player or a Quebec player. And we got a stoppage and a crazy call or incident right there. Five to three. Hartford leading. Introducing the all-new front-drive Chevy Nova. It's absolutely right. Look at the style. It's 
for cross-checking. There's another penalty been handed out down there as well, so they'll be coincidental. And that incident behind the net, Hogarth just upended. So a happy birthday gift given Hogarth behind the net as the player slid into him, and he wound up slammed up against the board. So there's... Here, here is the incident here now. As the puck was cleared away, this presented it as Ferraro cleared it out in front of the net. Now he's knocked down there. There goes the referee in against the boards, and he took the shot. He did. He thought that he'd been knocked over by one of the Quebec players. That was, uh, was that McEwen in there? I think it was Ferrero of Hartford who actually wound up bumping with the referee. Meanwhile, Price of Quebec gets a penalty for holding, and then Steve Patrick for cross-check. So two penalties in the same play here to Quebec. Patrick for cross-checking, Price for holding. You don't see that very often. Now we have what we, sh I guess, can call an eventful evening here. And meanwhile, the Whalers continue to lead this one by two. Well, Quebec is going to be two men short right here. Two penalties on the same play called against the Nordiques. First penalty, Patrick for cross-checking, and then Price for holding. And Michelle Bergeron can't believe it. Well, he has had a difficult row to hoe in this playoff series. The five-game series is a, is a tough series. You lose the first game at home, the pressure all of a sudden switches from the team that obviously finished below you in the standings out of your favor and into their favor. And that's what's happened to teams like Chicago who are facing elimination at the hands of Toronto tonight. Certainly these Nordics, also a divisional champion. And I remember going back uh, to the end of the Montreal Canadiens reign when the Edmonton Oilers who finished 16th in the league when they had that situation. Here's Hartford, they score! score even strength anymore we've had shorthanded goals power play goals now a two-man advantage goal off the face off this became a two-on-one caught up ice was Picard and it wound up on the stick of Ferraro and Ferraro again with that uncanny eye around the net put it in Price comes back on so the other Quebec player Steve Patrick stays in there and it's 6-3 Hartford Took seven seconds for that goal to be scored. Coach Brad Park, how did you feel about the two penalties on the one play to Quebec? As a coach, as a coach, if they're called against you, you're going to go crazy. And uh, Bergeron, he just stood there and laughed. He couldn't believe it. But they were both legitimate calls because what happened, Hogarth on the first one had his hand up to call a penalty. McEwen did get crossed in, checked into him on the second one. But you just hate to see it happen to you in the playoff game. Quickly took advantage of it and scored with a two-man advantage to take a six to three lead. Ferraro gets the goal. His second of this game, Anderson and Deneen the assist. 1308 the time. Quebec is still one man short. So Hartford continuing on a power play. We have had, to say the least, an eventful second period. A goal allowed to Quebec that we or our cameras never did see go into the net and two penalties on one play and quickly Hartford score. Here's Ferraro trying to move it in for Anderson. Now to Dave Babbitt. Shooting one. Hoslat turned that aside. Bote into the corner. Ferraro on him. Here's Deneen. Back to Babbitt. Babbitt shooting one in front. Oh, and Ferraro passed it off instead of shooting. Here's Anderson. He scores! Seconds of 
McCartney's two power play goals. It hopped over the stick there. Anderson then was allowed to circle out of the corner. It looked a little bit like that winning goal in overtime when Turgeon scored. And again, the defense was unable to pick him up on the power play. Anderson coming out to the spot in the faceoff circle and then letting it go. Well, now Quebec trailing by four with 6.26 left in the second period. Good shot, and Anderson's had a terrific game here tonight. He picks up two points in 27 seconds. And the fans here in the second period are celebrating a four-goal lead for Hartford. Emil Francis, the president and GM of the Whalers, told us before the game that John Anderson probably is the Hartford club's best shooter, and we just saw it there. He'd been trying to get Anderson from the days when he was with the Leafs, and Emil was the general manager of the St. Louis Blues. Finally got him just before the trade deadline, and he's become an important factor here. Two power play goals, just 26 seconds apart. And Hartford has a 7-3 lead. Back comes Peter Stosny. Into Ashton as the Nordiques come back. And sliding across was Quenville to break up that two-on-one. Here is Silton in shot from the point. The U stops that, Ashton back of the net. And now Samuelson trying to clear it. Picard held it in to Anton Stosny. Now to Ashton, but Samuelson there to break it up. And then clear it, and now we're going to get a penalty back in front of the net against Quinville of the Hartford Weather. So Quebec will go on a power play. It is 7-3 to three here in the second period in favor of Hartford. The Flyers and the New York Rangers are tied at one game apiece and tied at one in the second period in their Patrick Division matchup. Tim Kerr has scored for the Flyers. In the Norris Division, it is now 2-1 North Stars after one period in St. Louis. Neil Broughton on the power play and Dennis Marook. Those two goals for Hartford, 26 seconds apart on the power play. The Whalers have scored four power play goals here tonight. And Dave Tippett, who scored a shorthanded goal, trying to clear it up. Held in by Quebec. Here is a drive by Hunter wide of the target. Now the Nordiques unable to hold it in. And then they rule it was hit with a hand pass. Four power play goals by Hartford plus a shorthanded goal. Quebec has had a power play goal. They've had two power play goals and one shorthanded. And that takes care of eight of the ten goals that have been scored in this game. So the manpower situation, or shall we say the special teams have not covered themselves in glory on one side, and certainly for Hartford's power play, just the opposite. They have had a great night. That last scoring play, John Anderson gets the goal. Ferraro and Dave Babbitt's the assist. 13-34 the time to make it 7-3 Hartford. Here's Quebec coming back. Goulet leaving it there for Hunter. Now to Lemieux, dropping one back. Go back on a power play right here as they try and work it free to Hunter. Not in front, but Samuelson knocked it away. Here's Lemieux. Lemieux in behind the net to Hunter. Hunter out in front. Weak shot, Lyot the save. Samuelson cleared it. Held in at the point. Now Silton in drive. Lyot the save on that. And a pile up. And somewhere underneath. Samuelson is that puck as now Goulet gets into a pushing match with one of the Hartford Whalers, Scott Kleinendorf. Oh, Kleinendorf, yeah, right in front of the net is Goulet and Hunter desperately looking to, to find a rebound here. Here's the shot, a good one from the slot area, from the high slot, here it comes now, there it is. And a save off the blocker, but a long rebound, and that presented the problem. Now it's loose right there. Leo just gets down. Nice to have that size. And Hunter, ever so aggressively going after it Right in front of the net, as he always does. You see Hunter quit on a play. Shots on goal to this point in the game, favoring Hartford 25-20. 7-3, though, the Whalers lead is Dave Babbitts with Hartford still shorthanded, clearing it down the ice. Quenville has 50 seconds left in his penalty. Here's Silton. 
Now to Ashton, number nine. In with Sobe. Dropping it to Picard. Shot. The yoke to save. Sobe there to try and jab and lose, but couldn't. And we get a stoppage. Brad Park. I didn't expect this type of game with this situation. Quebec facing elimination. I didn't think it would be this wide open type of a game. I think it started, Dan, in the first period. Here's the shot coming through Sobe in front. Leute makes a good save, but he smothers the puck. I just think that uh, Hartford's skating with so much confidence out there. They know they've got good goaltending from this guy, Mike Leute, and he's playing, uh, he's got a hot hand that they're taking all kinds of chances. They're gambling, and they're carrying the play and forcing the issue. And, and Quebec are having a great difficulty because their defense has been weakened by injuries. There's a look at the goal, Judge. Uh, I'll tell you something. Look at him. He sits in a regular chair right in the middle of the crowd. Now, if he'd called that, made that call in Madison Square Garden against the Rangers, I wonder what the reaction from the crowd would have been around that area. Here's Delorme on the Quebec power play, a shot wide. Quebec with possession, getting it to Delorme again. Shooting, Leuda pad save. And the rebound is taken by Jarvis and cleared away. 20 seconds left in Quenville's penalty. Number six, Delorme for Quebec. The Nordiques trailing by four. Here's Lemieux. Firing it behind the net. Lemieux out of the goal to clear it. Shot it up on the boards. Now Dale Hunter gets it to Lemieux. Saved by Lemieux on the short side. Delorme sliding in to hold it. Pokes it into the corner. Lemieux can't center. Bopwell tried to freeze the puck and couldn't. Here's Hunter to Lemieux. Trying to get it in front. Bopwell broke that up and cleared it away. And Evison has it for the Whalers. Hartford now back at full strength. They've killed it off. Dean Evison. That's a long one go. That's up high off the glass. Wayne Babichin to get it for Hartford. But Gillis banked it off the boards for Quebec to Hunter. And Hunter bounces a long one wide of the Whaler goal with Kleinendorf back for Hartford. Shooting it into center ice. Picked up by Ferrero. Ferrero poke checked in the play, and the play is offside at the Quebec blue line. Major League Baseball on TSN. Now you know what you're missing. In the next intermission, Carlyle Team Sports salutes the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame and the man who pioneered hockey broadcasting. We'll also feature Hartford's Ron Francis along with the highlights and the NHL playoff scoreboard. 3-0-4 left in the second period. A high-scoring playoff game with Hartford leading 7-3. And Quebec, a very explosive team, but even they are... In big trouble here as they face elimination and trail by four goals. Here's Eagles for Quebec. Couldn't get it into the zone. Torrey Robertson shooting it back into center. And Babbitt poked it to the Quebec line. Donnelly shot it back out. Here's Robertson. He's checked and now Babbitt sliding it into the Nordique zone and Gord Donnelly, number 34, rink wide to Pat Price. Price into center ice to Mike Eagles. Off the boards to Gillis, who flipped it in. Leinendorf is there to bat it into the corner with a hand pass, and that will stop play, and we'll get a face-off in the Hartford zone. Well, there are many people like to refer to the Adams division as a bit of a zoo. It's very, very close, top to bottom. Certainly in the playoffs, the four playoff teams are that way. As we look at Old Samuelson, who's had a great game for the, the Whalers. No divisional winner in the Adams division in the five years that they have been playing and in interdivisional style play has gone on to play in the Wales Conference final. They've been eliminated. They started back in 1981-82, and that was the year Quebec knocked the divisional champion Canadians out in overtime. Dale Hunter scored. In 82-83, Buffalo took the Canadians out in the first round three straight. In 83-84, Boston won it, and Montreal took them out in three straight. In 84-85, which was last year, Quebec eliminated the Canadians in the seventh game of the divisional final. So this year, it appears that history is going to repeat for the fifth year in a row. Here's Dave Tippett for Hartford moving in to number seven, Stuart Gavin. Gavin trying to break free, but Picard knocked it away. And Quebec trying to move out of their own zone. 
pass into center ice. And here's Peter Stosny trying to get it over to Kumpel. Kumpel whacking it behind the net. Shot away by Quenville. And Siltonen has it for Hartford. Siltonen to Babich. Intercepted by Dave Babich. In across the line to Everson to Terja. Stick save there by Goslaw. And Anton Stosny back for Quebec. To Peter Stosny. Walsing through and a backhander handled by Liu. And then Liu handled the rebound as well. Quebec. Picard at the point was checked by Gavin. And now Delorme knocking it back into the Hartford zone. And that's called on an offside at the Whaler blue line. A minute 19 seconds left. Brad Park talked, Ron, about, as we look at Gilbert Delorme, who, by the way, is playing with a bad thumb tonight, talked about the confidence that Hartford is playing with in front of Liut. They know he can make the big save. If you look at Liut, his last 17 starts, playoffs and league, 12 wins, three losses, two ties. Not too shabby. Well, I talked earlier about the stretch drive that the Whalers put on. We were talking to Kevin Denis earlier, and I says, how do you like this playoff stuff? And he says, this is easy compared to our stretch drive. They faced all that pressure. This is easy, according to Kevin. And we'll get a penalty here on that last play against Hartford. And against Scott Kleinendorf, who will be set off by Ron Hogarth. A terrific penalty to Kleinendorf, and he is in the penalty box again. A four-goal lead for Hartford right now. You know, it's amazing how the order changed. Uh, I, I can remember, I started to mention earlier, the Edmonton Oilers coming in, finishing 16th overall in 1980. The Canadians just won four straight Stanley Cups. The Oilers came in and beat the Canadians in three straight. A first-place team against a 16th-place team. The Oilers, of course, have become the great hockey club that they have become off that series, basically. They didn't go that much further in the playoffs. Here's a Hartford team that's young, has great balance, based on young players and we're seeing them knock off a team that many people thought could reach the Stanley Cup final this year and they're doing it if this continues the way it is in three straight here's Tippett breaking away shorthanded for Hartford Gosla the save on Tippett who scored one earlier shorthanded and now Quebec will and was checked from behind and a tripping penalty called against Siltonen of the Nordiques here it is, as coming out is Tippett, and nothing Siltonen can do but catch up on this one. As Tippett goes in, Siltonen, rather than well, let him get a good shot away, he brought a pretty good one away even as he was going down. He draws the penalty, a former Whaler who was traded for John Anderson in, a, in the second deal of the year in which team members traded dressing rooms at a game. Siltonen went the day of the game from one dressing room to the other earlier. We'd had Greg Malone do the same thing in a game we were here for, as a matter of fact, for our CTV series. And Malone went from the Whaler dressing room over to the Nordics dressing room in much the same fashion. That was from the Wayne Babbage deal. Ron Francis will be visiting with us in our intermission. Stay with us for that. 54 seconds left in the period. Each team a man short, and Hartford in control here. Seven to three. Gilbert Delorme for Quebec. Both checked by Quenville on the play. And Gillis tied up by Francis. Now Gillis into Aline Cote, number 19. Cote trying to center. Kevin Deneen there to knock it away. And Deneen into center ice to Francis. Francis dropping it back for Quenville. His pass came outside the line, and Dave Babich will have to drop back, wait for his team to get on side. Here's Deneen passing to Francis. Missed him with the pass, and Price is there for Quebec. And he cleared it out with just six seconds left in the period. And a terrific period for the young Hartford Whalers. As the final seconds tick off, period two comes to an end. And after 40 minutes, it is Hartford 7, the Quebec Nordique Stray. Stay with us for our intermission. This is the NHL Stanley Cup Playoffs on CTV. This is a nose. Not just any nose, but a nose for value. This nose knows that when people travel, they want to be treated well without having to pay through the nose. Bless you. 
Now our same care and attention is available on a regular scheduled basis because now our nose for value flies across Canada daily. What the competition will do now, dear nose? Goodness knows. Ontario, get ready to get happy. Announcing the new Win Terrio with an instant win every week. Now, anytime you want to have a happy thought, think of the new Win Terrio ticket you got. Now it's easier to play. Whatever you do, win wherever you go. Remember your new Win Terrio. There'll be winners everywhere. Remember your new Win Terrio. And it's much more fun. Remember your new Win Terrio with an instant win every week. The new Win Terrio. Added vitamin C. What juiced up taste. C plus plus sun, C plus cycle, C plus plus bun, C plus Michael. Hey, <laughs> what about Carling? C plus fruit drink in a box. C plus, C plus. Juiced up taste. Buzz are three of the most unlikely private investigators. Operating from a waterfront office in the action adventure series Riptide, weekly on CTV. Maybe seeing a guy like Davy Keown was was uh, you know pretty intimidating. Uh, you heard so much about him and you watched him when, when you were growing up, and, and now to be out there skating alongside him was quite a th uh, thrill. And you know Gordy Howe always lurking around. That's a big thrill for you. And uh, that was a bit intimidated, but uh, yeah, overall I think it went went fairly well. Uh, the Whalers didn't rush me. They, they gave me a week in camp and decided to send me back for a little more maturing. Carling O'Keefe Sports pushed the land up close with Ron Francis. The Hartford captain, who already has a goal in this game tonight, came to the Whalers from his hometown of Sault Ste. Marie, where he played junior hockey with the Greyhounds. But it was a junior career that almost wasn't. Well, junior was, was kind of a funny situation. At, at 16, I had to decide whether to, to go to U.S. college or, or to play junior. And, uh, Actually, on, on the draft was, I believe, on a Saturday, and Monday night, I, I called the college, and I told them, I said, you know, get ready, I'm coming, and I believe at the time it was Cornell University, I said, I'm, you know, I'm going to come and play for you, and I told uh, the junior team in Sault Ste. Marie, as well as the other junior teams, that I was not going to play junior, and then uh, I had a few meetings with uh, the Terry Crisp and Sam McMaster in Sault Ste. Marie, and uh, Thursday night, I decided to change my mind, so I, I decided to play junior, and I got drafted by my hometown, so it was... Uh, you know, it was a good experience. I got to stay home, attend the same school, so I really didn't miss out on much, and it wasn't that much of an adjustment. And, uh, you know, everything worked out well, and, and, you know, I got drafted from there, and it's, it's just been, uh, you know, a great time ever since. Ron does not yet consider himself a complete hockey player, but he knows where his strength is. Well, uh, you know, I think the biggest uh, plus I have is, is uh, my playmaking, my ability to see uh, the open areas in the ice and, and, and make the, the right pass at the right time. Uh, I think at times it hurts me because I'm, I'm a little too, uh, you know, unselfish. I, sh I should take a few more shots in certain instances. Uh, I could probably improve on my skating a lot more. But uh, everything's going to come with time. Uh, you know, I'm just 22 years old. Things will be uh, getting, you know, a lot, of, a lot of hockey left in my career, hopefully. And, and uh, hopefully in the, in the years to come, we can improve on those areas. And it's been a breakthrough season for the Whalers. For the first time in five years, they are in the playoffs. Well, you know, I think it's, it's a pretty positive uh, step for the Hartford Whaler organization and for ourselves that, uh, you know, we are doing well and, and uh, you know, we've just been together a short while. But the big thing is there's a lot of talent on the line. So Vane's, uh, you know, he's a definite 50-goal scorer in this league. And, and Kevin Benin's a, you know, a 30-goal uh, scorer every year. And he, he works hard and he grinds and he's... he's uh, you know, he's not afraid to, to mess it up with anybody out there. And, and uh, myself, just trying to handle the puck uh, and, and feed the open guys, it, it seems to be working well. But the big thing is that, uh, you know, like I said, he's 22, 22, and 21 years old. Uh, 
there's a lot of hockey left, and, and I think when uh, in years to come, when we get to know each other and, and uh, you know understand the style of play that each one uh, performs out there, then we'll be a lot better. And what's so refreshing for Ron and company is that winning is such a nice change. You know, I, I remember a lot of the games uh, where we were getting blown out. Uh, one instance, it was it was nine one Quebec halfway through the second period in Quebec, and, the, and we only had five shots on net. You know, they had more goals than we had shots, and it's a frustrating feeling. Uh, a lot of uh, nights you go home wondering, uh, you know, what's wrong? What can you do to improve it? And there's really no single answer that's going to turn things around. It's, it's just a, a lot of hard work and a lot of time. And uh, you know, now that we are winning and we're, we're uh, a much improved hockey club, then uh, you know, no one's enjoying it more than I am myself. Ron Francis of the Hartford Whalers. A broadcasting legend when we return. It's the Whalers 7-3. This is Carling O'Keefe Sports. The Stanley Cup Playoffs on CTV. How do all the cars sold in Canada stack up on durability? Well, they say they're durable. But for the last three years, the Canadian Automobile Association polled car owners about durability, service, and performance. In three years, only Toyota has received the coveted CAA award, and the Toyota Corolla received it twice. So you see, we don't have to say the Toyota Corolla is durable. Corolla owners said it tops them all. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota! When I travel, I always go first class. Nothing but the best for me. And now that I am introducing the light, I'll be on the road even more. Light is good here, it tastes great, and it tastes less filling, which is important. Because us jet setter always like to travel light. I'll probably have one at the end of my next voyage. Come on, Mac, the bus is leaving. Light beer from Miller, now brewed in Canada. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. We're off to see the wizards, most wizardly wizards there was. We're going to Expo 86 because... How do we get there? What do we do there? Where do I get some oil? Espo! All the stuff you need to know in the free Expo Guide from Esso. Thank you. No trouble. We're going to Expo 86 to see the wizardly wondrous things they'll be. We're out to see the wizards. There's a little bit of copper in every Autolite spark plug. Some have a copper core to help small engines run better. And other Autolite plugs have copper in the seal or gasket for better conductivity. So it doesn't matter if you're driving a small car or a big one, a new car or an old one, an import or a domestic, because Autolite makes a copper plug for every car made. Remember, if Autolite's on it, there's copper in it. was the voice of hockey for over 50 years. We'll pay him tribute today as Carling O'Keefe Sports salutes Canada's Sports Hall of Fame. Back, if he drives it right back, he shoots it. Oh! That most famous phrase in all Canadian sport was heard for the first time on a cold winter's night in February of 1923. Hockey fans across Canada listened to Foster Hewitt deliver the first broadcast of an NHL game. The modern age of hockey brought television coverage, expansion, rule changes, and new superstars. And yet the voice of hockey remained the same. For his commitment and dedication to sport, Foster Hewitt is honored in Canada's Sports Hall of Fame. Foster Hewitt was born in Toronto in 1903. At the age of 20, he became the first to broadcast a complete NHL hockey game. When Maple Leaf Gardens opened in 1931, he was both master of ceremonies and broadcaster for the first game in the new arena. For generations to come, his familiar opening was heard over most of the continent. Ernest Stacy, and of course, Foster Hewitt. Hello, Canada, and hockey fans in the United States. Hewitt's particular style of broadcasting conveyed the quickness and the exhilaration of the sport. In the course of his career, Foster called some of hockey's most spectacular games. 
like the 1944 Stanley Cup playoffs when Maurice the Rocket Richard scored a record five goals in one game. In 1962, he saw Bobby Hall break the Rockets record of 50 goals in one season. The highlight of Foster Hewitt's career was the first Canada-Soviet series of 1972. Foster provided the commentary as he followed our team to Moscow and was witness to the greatest comeback in hockey history. When he described Paul Henderson's winning goal, his voice sparked a celebration that Canadians will never forget. Here's another shot. the many honors that Foster Hewitt received for over 50 years of broadcasting, our membership into the Hockey Hall of Fame and the Order of Canada. Foster Hewitt, the voice of hockey, was inducted into Canada's Sports Hall of Fame in 1975. Chevy Celebrity Eurosport. The only way you know it's a family car is that it's got what families value. Room, price, and at no extra cost, air available. Now there's 10.9% financing available over 36 months or 11.9% over 48 months to qualified buyers of Chevy Celebrities with a 2.5 liter engine. That's the Chevy way to go. Way to go, Chevy. It says here my home will be shown twice this week. Yes, ma'am. Check. The ad is running Saturday. Check. Royal LePage wants you to know we're working hard for you. So as proof of our commitment, we designed our exclusive home marketing program to help you keep track of what we're doing, plus give you lots of selling advice. It's good to know that you know that I know that you know what you're doing. I know. <laughs> mm. Announcing a special offer at Wendy's. Another burger offer. Whoopee! But our offer starts with a quarter pound of fresh ground beef. Okay, Wendy's, the fresh part, I'll give you. Served hot off the grill with processed cheese and crisp bacon. A bacon cheeseburger? Oh, Wendy's, you're reaching me. Then we top it with your choice of fresh toppings. And the offer? Just $1.49 when you purchase regular fries. Wendy's Bacon Cheeseburger. For a limited time, only $1.49. When engines couldn't afford to get any bigger, they started getting smaller and working harder. That's why Valvoline developed 4Guard motor oil. 4Guard for today's four-cylinder engines fights heat, fights wear, and most important, 4Guard won't break down for 12,000 kilometers. New 4Guard from Valvoline. Special oils for special cars. Valvoline is available at Wilco and other leading retailers. In the second period, the Hartford Whalers outscored the Quebec Nordiques 3-1 on goals by Ulf Samuelson, Ray Ferrero, and John Anderson, the lone Quebec tally in that plane, coming off the stick of Dale Hunter, or something off Dale Hunter. You say it didn't come off Dale Hunter, Brad Park. Well, we'll get to that a little bit later in, the, in our package, but uh, I think the Hartford Whalers are a team that's just not going to be denied tonight. They've come out strong at the beginning of the period. They finished the period strong. There was a disputed goal in between, and that's just not going to deny them. We're going to have a look at our first highlight tonight in the second period is Ulf Samuelson's goal. Now, here's a look at John Anderson walking in. Watch Gosselin out of the net, plays the shot. Now, it's going to be the recovery time of Gosselin. Here's Samuelson at the point, shooting the puck. Gosselin's got scrambled back to the net, is screened, but the puck finds the hole right between his legs. Gosselin was deep in the net, and it was just one of those goals that happened, but it picked up the, uh, the Hartford Wheelers without a doubt. The second goal of the highlight is the one by Anderson. It's a power play. Here's the shot from the point. It gets in front of the net. Here's Farrell going wide. Now watch Anderson pick it up in the corner. 
He walks to the front. Everybody's a little bit disorganized, but what a wrist shot that just beats Gosselin. Now, look where Gosselin is in the net. He's still deep in the net, and he got beat pretty good on that one. And that now, was the goal that made it 7-3. Now, the Carling O'Keefe Sports. <laughs> Play of the period. Can I All guess? Right, the disputed goal. <laughs> the goal that wasn't. The goal that did not go in the net. However, they felt it did. And we've got to look at this highlight, and you've got to watch Mike Leute's right leg. As the puck goes behind the net, watch Goulet pick it up. On the other side, it comes across. Now watch Leute's right foot. Here comes the puck across the crease. It's in the skate. There it is, right out by the top of the crease. The puck did not go in the, night, the net, but the goal judge called it in. Doesn't look like the Nordiques are going to be able to make much use of it, though. It's 7-3 Hartford as we get set to the third period. This is Cryo Keep Sports, Stanley Cup playoff action on CBS. <laughs> Nothing clears my head better than a romp down a road like this. If that doesn't make sense to you, then this car probably won't either. The new generation Mazda RX-7 pours out power as smooth as silk, as only a rotary can. And nothing has a more advanced suspension system, so you track through turns like you're on rails. You can pay a whole lot more for a sports car and still not have this much fun. Say, aren't you, aren't you the driver of this new RX-7? Hi. Hi. When I travel, I always go first class. Nothing but the best for me. And now that I am introducing the light, I'll be on the road even more. Light is good here, it tastes great, and it tastes less filling, which is important. Because us jet setter always like to travel light. I'll probably have one at the end of my next voyage. Come on, Mac, the bus is leaving. Light beer from Miller, now brewed in Canada. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Ask some mechanics what's wrong with your car, and you might need an interpreter. Well, it looks like maybe a loose Jimson saddle after the slugs pump. Unless it's a torque built bindle rotor. And try asking them when your car will be done. Well, let me see. Scamming a bindle rotor could take two, three, even more, and a sludge pump on top of that. Well... But at Canadian Tire, we'll tell you exactly what your car needs and why, with no mumbo-jumbo. Mr. Olinator, it'll be ready by three. We promise. Canadian Tire, the right choice for auto service, has never been so clear. Amphigel, fast relief from the distress of heartburn and excess acid. Amphigel Plus relieves heartburn and gas. Both available in soothing liquid or convenient tablets. You're not so sorry now. Checking the out-of-town scoreboard. No change yet. And Boston Bruins still lead 3-2 now in the third period with Montreal. Flyers and the Rangers 1-1 in the second. This is Patrick Division action. Mike Bossy has scored. Washington, however, still leads the Islanders 3-1 late in the third. The Norris Division, Leafs 2-0 in the second there in front of Chicago. Minnesota 2-1 in front of St. Louis in St. Louis. And in the Smythe, the Oilers are in front of Vancouver 3-0 in the second period. Also in the second frame in Winnipeg, it's Plains 2, Jets 1. Stay tuned following tonight's telecast. The Carlin O'Keefe Sports Offensive and Defensive Game Stars will receive a Royal Canadian Mint 1-ounce gold coin presented by Mita Copiers. Mita didn't get to be the fastest growing copier company by making cameras. Mita, just great copiers, nothing else. Well, it is seven to three. The Hartford Whalers leading the Quebec Nordics. So the Nordics know what they have to do in the third period. And it's a big uphill climb for them. the Quebec Nordiques 3-1 on goals by Ulf Samuelson, Ray Ferrero, and John Anderson, the lone Quebec tally in that plane, coming off the stick of Dale Hunter, or something off Dale Hunter. You say it didn't come off Dale Hunter, Brad Park. Well, we'll get to that a little bit later in, uh, in our package, but uh, I think the Hartford Whalers are a team that's just not going to be denied tonight. They've come out strong at the beginning of the period. They finished the period strong. There was a disputed goal in between, and that's just not going to deny them. We're going to have a look at our first highlight tonight in the second period is Ulf Samuelson's goal. Now, here's a look at John Anderson walking in. Watch Gosselin out of the net, plays the shot. Now, it's going to be the recovery time of Gosselin. Here's Samuelson at the point, shooting the puck. Gosselin's got scrambled back to the net, is screened, but the puck finds the hole right between his legs. 
Dawson was deep in the net, and it was just one of those goals that happened, but it picked up the, uh, the Hartford Whalers without a doubt. The second goal of the highlight is the one by Anderson. It's a power play. Here's the shot from the point. It gets in front of the net. Here's Farrell going wide. Now watch Anderson pick it up in the corner. He walks to the front. Everybody's a little bit disorganized, but what a wrist shot that just beats Gosselin. Now look where Gosselin is in the net. He's still deep in the net, and he got beat pretty good on that one. And that now, was the goal that made it 7-3. Now the Carling O'Keefe Sports. <laughs> Play of the period. Can I guess? Right, the disputed goal. <laughs> the goal that wasn't. The goal that did not go in the net. However, they felt it did. And we've got to look at this highlight, and you've got to watch Mike Leute's right leg. As the puck goes behind the net, watch Goulet pick it up. On the other side, it comes across. Now watch Leute's right foot. Here comes the puck across the crease. It's in the skate. There it is, right out by the top of the crease. The puck did not go in the, night, the net, but the goal judge called it in. Doesn't look like the Nordiques are going to be able to make much use of it, though. It's 7-3 Hartford as we get set for the third period. This is Cryo Keep Sports, Stanley Cup playoff action on CBS. Nothing clears my... The Quebec Nordics, so the Nordics know what they have to do in the third period, and it's a big uphill climb for them. Well, if you're behind and facing elimination by a goal or two, you're still in the thick of things, but this would take a gargantuan comeback by Quebec, trailing by four goals and facing a red-hot Mike Leu. That record, by the way, 5-0 and 2 in the last seven home games, that is a club record for consecutive unbeaten at home for the Whalers. And this team has really caught the public fancy. This is a team that a couple of years ago lost a million and a half dollars, lost a million last year, and this year they're happy that they're going to be losing only about, well, at the end of the season they figured about a half million, but with some playoff money now, it looks like it's going to be almost a break-even situation. Or maybe a money maker, depending yeah. on how far they go. Here we go at the third period, and Hartford has a seven to three lead. Each team, a man short as this period begins, Goulet sliding it across to Dale Hunter. Hunter over onto the other side, now centered for DeLorme, but Ron Francis is there to knock it away. Can't get it out, and Quenville drops to Samuelson, now to Deneen, who shoots it to the Quebec line. Dale Hunter dropping it back into his own zone to DeLorme, and Gilbert DeLorme, number six for Quebec. Into center ice to Cote. Babbitt skates him off, and Stuart Gavin for Hartford, dropping it into his own zone to Tim Bothwell. Bothwell winding it around onto right wing to Babbitt to Gavin. Now Hartford's penalized player back on, so the winner's on a brief power play. They move in, but it's broken up at the Quebec line. Just four seconds left in Silton and Spedley, and then Quebec will be at full strength. Silton is back on. Here's Dave Babbitt. Lead pass to Everson, number 12. Centering one, knocked away by Quebec. Donnelly failed to clear it out. Shot in behind the Quebec goal, and Picard gives it to Ashton. Turgeon pinching in. Now it's Gavin to Babbitt. Into the corner. Turgeon centering to Gavin, but he's knocked off the puck by Silton, and right back comes Gillis. Into Brent Ashton for the Nordique, centering it. Leute slides across and makes a big save, and then... The next try hits the side of the net. Another shot by Picard, and Leute stopped that. And then Picard is upended. That was twice on that same rush that Leute beat Picard. He is, for a big man, very quick in the goal mouth area. Picard goes down. You're always concerned as we see this play unfold. That's Ashton breaking in with that goal mouth pass and the chance for Picard. Now Picard picks it up again, slides it in front of the net. But Leute gets across very quickly, perhaps as much a secret to, along with the fact that he never goes down, as you can see in that sequence, secrets to his play. Agility, cat-like quickness. If we can use the rather old phrase that led to the nickname of the general manager of this team, Emile the Cat Francis. Who's a goaltender? Seven to three, Hartford leading. And they need to just win this game to win the series. And they're in mighty good shape, as one might think. Buck cleared near the Quebec line. Shot in by McDermott. McDermott and 
Delorme wrestled around. Now the puck centered, but Anton Stosny gets it, and right back comes Quebec. Anton Stosny trying to feed it through. Intercepted by Kleinendorst, and here's McDermott to Jarvis. Back to McDermott with a drive, and Gosla a glove save, and look at Gosla almost to the blue line with a lead pass into center ice. Back comes Mike McEwen for Hartford, number 25. His shot off the stick and up over the glass into the crowd. And that's the way the third period begins. Here's the taste that's always right, the Lyman taste of Sprite. Cool, crisp, and sparkling with the taste of Lyman. The lemon-lime taste that reaches deep down inside and makes you feel so totally refreshed. That's the Lyman taste, the taste that refreshes you best. One of the many signs here at the Civic Coliseum in Hartford, the Whalers, with Quebec on the brink of elimination. Here is Goulet for the Nordiques, and Liu to save on the short side. And now coming back is Babbage. Long pass to Deneen, missed the mark, or missed Deneen, but they rule Hartford. Quebec could have played it. There's no icing. Now Dale Hunter getting it into center ice. And coming back and breaking the play up was Deneen, and Deneen, a lead pass to Francis, who stayed on side in the play. He drops it to John Anderson. This is Hartford's big scoring line, Francis Deneen and Anderson, but Quebec break this one up and a lead pass to Goulet. All the way down the ice, and Liu setting it up for Jim Bothwell. Now to Babbage. Dave Babbage for Hartford to Tory Robertson, number 32. Robertson to Wayne Babbage, number 17. Trying to flip it in front, and that's knocked away, and Hunter just cleared it to center ice. Here's Ashton picking it up. Brent Ashton. Ashton number nine out in front. Liut the save. Tries to smother it. And it's poked at and poked wide by Ashton. And then Hartford come right back. Ferrero number 26. And Ferrero just dumps it in. Quebec to Delorme starting back up. Headmanning it into center ice to Ashton. And that's called back on a two-line offside pass. The World Hockey Association came, of course, into the National Hockey League five years ago, as we look at Alain Lemieux. And it has had its effect, certainly. There's a sign there, you see it. The WHA is alive and well in the NHL. Who would have believed it? But Quebec is a divisional champion. Edmonton, obviously, defending Stanley Cup champions and winners again in their division. That's half of the league. They are WHA teams. Here's Hartford on the rise. Winnipeg also, of course, the other team of the four that came into the league. So, yes, the WHA is alive and well and winning in the NHL. Brad Park, if you're coaching Quebec, you're down by four coming into the third period. What do you do? Send five men in and take a chance or what? You're not going to play defense, believe me. You're going to have your defensemen going every time they can. You may even take a forward and put them on defense. Here's Gavin back for Hartford. Dropping one to Everson, swept away by the Nordiques into center ice as Mike Eagles broke it up. And now McEwen to Gavin at center, and Stuart Gavin just shoots it in. Lord Donnelly trying to clear it out. Two Coke number 19. And now back to the play. A Quebec player shaken up. Fans reacting to that as play goes right on. There's no penalty call. And Kleinendorst has it as Gillis was the injured player for Quebec. He goes to the bench and then hollers at the official. He's okay, but I thought that Hartford should have had a penalty. Here's Donnelly for the Nordiques to Goulet. Knocked away by the defense. Now a drop pass to Goulet. Came outside the line. Carried back in and it's offside. You're watching the Stanley Cup playoffs on CTV. Here's your pizza pizza pocket. What's that? It's mushrooms, cheese, pepperoni, and tomato sauce baked in sweet dough. I'll have a pocket pizza. It's a pizza pocket. A pizza pizza pocket. I hope you don't expect me to save you, because I don't do that anymore. 
All right, Webster, the game's over. He's going to get me! Don't bet on it! The Man of Steel is back. Superman 3, a special presentation, Sunday, April 20, at 8 p.m. 14.50 remaining in the third period. The Hartford Whalers 7, Quebec 3. Well, that's the play that Quebec was complaining about as Gillis was yes. upended near the net and then chopped at Turgeon. Brad Park, as we went to the last commercial, had one comment. He said, things may get ugly. Oh, it, it, it has that capability. Just that last play with Turgeon and Gillis, you know, you don't save it now if you've got some hate out there. Here's Jarvis dumping it in. Dossla out of the net to stick handle by one man and feed Silton. In. Now to Goulet at center, and he flips it in. Dave Babbitt's back to get it, clearing it into the corner. Now Goulet for Quebec, does center. Loose in front, but cleared away by Joel Quinville. And now Dave Tippett, a lead pass to McDermott. McDermott taken out by Picard, got the shot off anyway. And then McDermott tumbled into the boards, but he gets up, he's okay. A tough competitor, McDermott. Back is Silton in for Quebec into Hunter. Hunter couldn't get the shot off. Now over on the far side, Anton Stastny for Quebec. Over to the other point to Donnelly, and Leute gets a piece of that to steer it away. And then Samuelson in front of the net, getting his stick up with Dale Hunter. Samuelson and Hunter have to be separated. Hunter ripped a stick out of Samuelson's hand and then dropped his own stick. Yeah. Separated finally. So Ulf Samuelson and Dale Hunter will go to the penalty box here in Hartford. to eliminating Chicago from the Stanley Cup playoffs. Tom Fergus, Merkel Freacher made it 4-0. Wendell Clark has also scored. That is now 5-0 in Toronto. In Boston, it's tied one more time. For the third time this evening, Bob Ganey has brought the Canadians back. Talk about horses for courses, uh, teams for teams. Chicago had a good year. They seem to control things pretty much in their division except one team, Toronto. And Toronto obviously has a way of playing that team that doesn't appeal to Bobby Fulford and company. Definitely. You never know what's going to happen when you get into the playoffs, and the, a lot of first-place teams complain when they play a lower club, and the club knocks them off. Here's Hartford with Kevin Deneen shooting one. Goslav the save on that, and Ashton tries to clear it up. Held in by Anderson. Pass to Deneen. Deneen looking to return it, dropping it to Kleinendorf, shooting that deflects just wide. Now Deneen, number 11. Goslav poked it away from him. Francis and Ashton into the corner. And Ashton firing it over onto the other wing. Hartford John Anderson held it in. Into Deneen who fell down. And then Ashton cleared it. Here's Anderson back of the net to Deneen again. Number 11 Deneen out in front of shot. They score! John Anderson and it's 8 3 for Hartford. John Anderson has been in will receive points on the last five Hartford goals. A five-point night for Anderson. He has made it eight to three. A former Nordic. He was traded twice this year. First from the Toronto Maple Leafs to Quebec. And now here he is in Hartford and obviously very happy about it. The pass out, short angle, as slow getting across to cover on the short side was Gosselin. John Anderson picks up his second consecutive goal and his fifth consecutive point. Anderson from Deneen at the seven-minute mark. It is eight to three for the Whalers. By the way, those previous penalties to Samuelson and Hunter each drew double minors. 
coincidental penalties, but they're both gone for four minutes. Quite a night for John Anderson, the native of Toronto, the ex leaf the ex nordique and quite a night so far for Emo Francis, Jack Evans, and the Hartford Whalers. Here's Peter Stostick dropping it to Pat Price, a shot lead. Turn that aside. Now Anton Stosny couldn't center. Now behind the net, Cote tried to work it in front. He fell down. And Quenville gets it into center ice, and it just jumped in by Hartford. Tip it in to get it. Trying to center to McDermott, who was behind him. And it's shot into center ice. And the crowd is singing here in Hartford, Connecticut. Long shot by McDermott just wide. Silton and into center ice to Peter Stostick. And across the line, Anton Stostick to Peter. Shot right on, Leuk the save. Here to the Tory Robertson. Now to Ferrero. Ray Ferrero to Robertson. Back to Ferrero, but Gord Donnelly was there. Couldn't clear it, and now it comes to Anton Stostick. He drops it back deep into his own zone, and now Cote flipping it out on the boards. Came out of the zone. Hartford trying to carry back in, but Babbage was checked. And then the puck is just shot to the Hartford line, and Robertson. But Hartford leading 8-3. to three. Puck cleared in. Shot out by Donnelly, and Kleinendorf is there. Kleinendorf clearing it back in for Hartford. Vosley out of the net to play the puck. Shoots it over onto the boards, and now DeLorme for the Whalers. Flipping it into center ice, and Dave Babbage knocks it down there. Terjaw to Wayne Babbage, back to Terjaw. Trying to break in, but he's tied up. And Donnelly comes up with the puck. Into center ice to Mark Kumpel, number 17. Kumpel to his backhand, and Leute got a skate on that. Here's Kumpel behind the net. Knocked away by Dave Babbage. Now back of the net, and centered, and Everson is there. Giving it to Stuart Gavin, back to Dean Everson. Ahead to Terja, but the play is offside at the Quebec Blue Line. Eight to three in favor of Hartford. You're watching the Stanley Cup playoffs on CTV. When I travel, I always go first class. Nothing but the best for me. And now that I am introducing the light, I'll be on the road even more. Light is good here, it tastes great, and it tastes less filling, which is important because us jet setter always like to travel light. I'll probably have one at the end of my next voyage. Come on, Mac, the bus is leaving. Light beer from Miller, now brewed in Canada. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. It's all over on the island, and it's all over for this year for the Islanders. Three different defensemen scored for the Caps. They complete a three-game sweep of their arch rivals, 3-1 tonight's final. Elsewhere in the Patrick Division, the Flyers have now gone in front of the Rangers, playing in the second period in Madison Square Garden. Ilka Sinisalo with the only goal so far of the second frame. Well, here we have 10.43 to play. And it's some kind of penalty call on that last play, or what? I see Hogarth over at the penalty timekeeper's box, and I'm not sure why. Dan, I kept my eye on Paul Gillis and Sylvain Turgeon, and Gillis was going out of his way to get at Turgeon. He cross-checked him in the back. He hooked him. And at right that last play, as they crossed the blue line, Gillis hooked Turgeon right around the lip. He got the stick up on him, and that goes back to that uh, spear in front of the net, the slash. Here's a look. Now watch Turgeon. Now as the camera comes back, watch this. Oh. Excuse me. I don't think he even said that. Too many high sticks. Gillis gets a high sticking. So does Turgeon. Again, coincidental penalties. 10.43 left. 8-3. to three. Hartford. Well, just the air that... Everyone thought that Washington would be eliminated after having been eliminated three years in a row by the Islanders. The Capitals sweep the Islanders in three straight. I thought history might repeat because of the injury list going in. Uh, the word was that they were going to miss Carpenter for at least the first two games of the series. Gartner was going to be out perhaps the first two as well. They came back for the opening game, and that was probably the biggest thing that's in their favor. 
Here's Quebec moving in, and the play goes offside at the Hartford blue line. John Anderson with a very big night for the Hartford Whalers. John Anderson played on a line with the with two members of the Whalers at the World Hockey Championship, the silver medalist World Hockey Championship in Prague, Czechoslovakia last year. Now, all of a sudden, he's reunited with Ron Francis and Kevin Deneen, plays on Francis's line, and uh, I'm sure that Francis, very, and Deneen, of course, as well, were very pleased to see him come over here. He's a great skater, adds speed to the wing on this team, and a veteran player, and look at the leadership he showed in this game tonight. The icing is called there. The leadership he has shown in this game has been tremendous, Brad. And you look at people, a young team like this, they, the hardest thing, I think, for a young team to learn to do is close the deal. And I think that as we looked at the beginning of this game, they got into the 2-0 lead, and all of a sudden, Quebec kept narrowing it again on them. All of a sudden, Anderson took over and blew the game apart with the five straight points. Definitely. John Anderson has been such an effective player in this game. I don't think that the Nordiques really wanted to trade John Anderson because he had played well for them. But because of the injuries this year that they had to their defense, they had to go and get a defenseman. And Silton, I'm sure they shopped around the league, and Silton was one of the few guys that they thought they could acquire, and they had to give up a player to get him, and they didn't really want to lose Anderson. Here's Silton at the point for the shot wide. Now Plannendorf getting it loose for Jarvis, who pokes it to Tippett at center. Quebec break it up, and Picard starting back for the Nordiques, trying to shoot it in. McEwen tried to clear it, now Picard again. Backhander well wide of the net from a bad angle. Here's Eagles with a shot. He missed the net. Quebec holding it in, but now tip it to Jarvis. Oh, he takes a lick from Eagles. Right in the center ice area. Now Ashton gets it into the Hartford zone, and the much-traveled Mike McEwen beating Kevin Deneen to Kleinendorf to got it into center ice, and then it's shot back in by Picard. Here comes Goulet for Quebec, centering one right across the front of the net. And now Anderson for the Nordique shoots at the center, and it's Picard at the Quebec blue line. Lead pass to Anton Stosny, but Dave Babich is back to get it. Babich for Hartford. Fired it, it took a crazy hop off the boards, comes to Donnelly at the point. He partially fanned, and back comes Quenville for Hartford. Quenville to Denis. Back to Quenville and off his skate wide. Quenville behind the net, couldn't center. And now Quebec with Goulet just shoot at the center ice. Dave Babbage, number 44, the ex-Winnipeg Jet, just flipping it and flipping it up over the glass into the crowd. Eight to three, Hartford leading. This is the NHL on CTV. When the Toronto Chrysler dealers asked me to do commercials, I thought, great, new car every week, dinner with Lee Iacocca. Now they tell me they haven't got a lot of money. No wonder, they're giving it all away. With these special edition K cars, you get a $500 rebate, or low 9.9% .9 financing, plus automatic transmission or air conditioning at no extra cost. You could save a bundle. And of course I get lunch. Is Mr. Iacocca here yet? Your Toronto Chrysler dealers, we the Maple Leafs aren't out of the woods yet. The Chicago Blackhawks are coming back. Goals by Ken Uremchuk and Tom Lysiak, 5-2. Kent Nielsen in the second frame has given the North Stars a 3-1 lead in St. Louis. Right from the faceoff, the puck cleared up over the glass into the crowd, and there you see some of the happy folks in Hartford, Connecticut. 8.47 left. Their team leading 8-3, and 30-year-old Mike Leute, one of the big reasons for that. Who's next? Will it be the Canadians or the Boston Bruins, uh, says the sign. They're ready to take on the world here in Hartford tonight. And I think of what we've seen in this series and the cohesiveness of play that they are quite capable of beating either the Canadians or the Boston Bruins. Should be a good series. Here's the shot. They score! Leute stopped the first one, but Kumpel was there to get the rebound, and that cuts the Hartford lead to 8-4. to four. This puck seemed to slide upwards off the stick of Leut, and as it did so, Leut lost control of it. The deflection in front of the net, it seemed to go up in the air, and it's batted out of midair and down into the net past Leut. But the fact that he failed to control that rebound is, is the problem. 
will let him have that small slip, I think, at this stage. So that cuts the Hartford lead to still a sizable four-goal margin. By the way, we've had six power play goals in this score, scored in this game. Four by Hartford, two by Quebec. The all-time record is seven, set back in 18 or 1984 in the Minnesota Edmonton series. Here is Dave Tippett for the Whalers shooting it in. Doug Jarvis back to get it, trying to clear it. Gives it to Tippett, who knocked it back to the net. And DeLorme taking over for the Nordiques. Flipping it to center ice. Samuelson breaks it up as Kumpel comes down to try and work the puck free. And we get a stoppage. That last scoring play, Kumpel, his first goal to the playoffs, assisted by Lemieux at 11-19. Trevor Steinberg, also a Steinberg in there, the young junior from uh, London of the OHL. His first point in the playoffs. Off is going to be at the. Well, he, uh, we had Steinberg. I had him not, not listed. I think it is Silton. Yeah, it is Silton. That, uh, that Steinberg was uh, scratched by Quebec. So the announcement incorrect and should raid Kumpel from Silton and Lemieux at 11 19. Hunt, I'd heard you say right at the outset that Steinberg yeah, that's was right. It did. Shocked me a bit. Long time ago, you know. Yeah. Here's Kleinendorst in center ice, flipping it in. And going back to get it is Pat Price for the Nordiques, who trail by four with less than eight minutes to play. Elaine Cote tipping it in, and that's called back on a two-line offside. 7.33 to play, perhaps in the season for the Quebec Nordiques. This is the NHL on CTV. At this time of year, on TV, radio, and in the papers, everybody's making a lot of noise about sales. Mazda dealers don't shout deals, they make deals that are consistent, great values. Like the new generation RX-7. Right now, we have a fine selection of this remarkably well-equipped sports car. So now is your best time to buy. Great values don't need screaming and shouting. Come and get a great Mazda value today. Because at your Toronto area Mazda dealers, we deliver a good deal more. Hartford Whalers seem to have this series locked up. Our next telecast on CTV next Thursday night, 7.30 Eastern time. Washington against either Philadelphia or New York. Here is Deneen now for Hartford with a couple of pops. First stop by Goslaw. The second went wide. And now back comes Hunter shooting it in. High shot. Well, you look like the tallest shortstop in history as he came out to catch that one. Talk a little bit about Emil Francis and what he has done with this hockey team since he took the team over. And may I say, he took the team over at the same time that he went into the National Hockey League's Hall of Fame as a builder. He then proceeded to rebuild the Hartford Whalers. There's only one player left on the team from the team he took over three years ago. That is Ron Francis. This year alone, he has acquired through trade Stuart Gavin from Toronto in October for Chris Kotsopoulos, Tim Bothell from St. Louis for future considerations, Babich from Winnipeg for Ray Neufeld, Doug Jarvis for Jorgen Pedersen, Wayne Babich for Greg Malone, John Anderson for Risto Silton, and then Mike McEwen over from Cropper. That's seven players acquired in deals this year, and he's got a good hockey club. Here's Anderson stealing, centers to Francis, and trying to get it back to Anderson, but it's was tipped. They were in Hartford about a year ago in March, and they were ready to run Emil Francis right out of town, and Jack Evans with him. Well, now they want to put him on a pedestal here in Hartford. What a difference a year makes. Dan, take it. Let's go elsewhere in the Adams Division in Boston. It's all over right now, and Bob Ganey, an unlikely offensive hero for the Canadians, scores the tying goal in the third period, and then gets the winner shorthanded. 4-3, Montreal the final. Elsewhere, it's Edmonton 4-1 in Vancouver. That was playing the third period. Thomas Gradine for the Canucks. Wayne Gretzky has got uh, has pushed, pushed the score up to 4-1. Brad, you saw the Montreal Canadiens uh, at the tag end of the season when you brought your Detroit Red Wings into the forum. You've seen this Hartford Whaler team. How about a little preview of what that series is going to look like? 
I think right now that Hartford's probably skating better than Montreal. Montreal has a great rivalry with Boston, and which brings the guys uh, up to play at a better level. But I don't think there's a team right now, very few that are skating as well as Hartford. Well, I agree with you. And I'm from Montreal. <laughs> 6.28 left here in the third period. Buck is tipped in by Wayne Babbitt and going back to get it and clearing it as Silton and as the Nordiques try and come back. He couldn't get it in as Dave Babbitt knocked it down to Ferrero. Now to Wayne Babbitt. Back to Ray Ferrero. Dostla out of the net to knock it away. And the Nordiques. Picard can't get it up. Now he tries to tie up his man on the boards. Ferrero comes in. Corey Robertson continued to battle, but now Cote just drops it back to Siltonen. And number 12 for Quebec and the former Whaler, Risto Siltonen, to center ice into Ashton. Ashton leaving it for Eagles. Couldn't get his shot off. Eagles continues to battle now to Dale Hunter. Everson tied him up. Quebec trying to center. Knocked away from the side of the net by Tim Bothwell. Ashton dropping it back. And Everson intercepts at Hartford. Try and clear it up. And finally do. Terzau to Dean Everson, number 12. Everson around Trice in on goal. Shot it wide. And Delorme comes back for Quebec. Into center ice to Ashton. Pass. In behind Goulet. And now Everson comes back for the Whalers. Everson to Terja. Terja moving in. And then back of the play, Ashton getting into it with Stuart Gavin. And now Dale Hunter and Samuelson get into it over on the boards. Two separate fights going. Well, Samuelson's not a fighter. He's never learned anything about that. As I said about him, he is, first of all, he's going to find out how to fight here, I guess, against Hunter. this one we've got two of them the line's going to tie it up so that means that hunter and samuelson are going to be allowed to to do it on their own because the linesmen are tied up in the other area there it is so off to the right of your picture that's the main event the other one has been nicely controlled by the linesman and ron hogarth just trying to keep everybody away from this one doesn't want a third man in there so they're not doing much Either one of them. They've got a good hold on each other. Samuelson's a big guy. Interesting thing is, how often do you see a fight anymore in which both combatants have their helmets on? Now, as they fall to the ice, in come the linesmen to separate Samuelson and Dale Hunter. And they're probably so doggone tired after yeah. that wrestling match that they're relieved that the linesmen finally got there. 4.58 remaining, 8-4 to four in favor of Hartford. Major League Baseball on TSN. Now you know what you're missing. Who is Ashton? Nothing as well. Over here, Ron Hogarth, the referee, as he... Meets out the penalties. Two and two to Gavin and Ashton. Five and five to Hunter and Samuelson. Five each. Now, Gavin is heading to the penalty box. Uh, we've got 4.58 left in this hockey game. As we think ahead to the playoffs, and let's look back a little bit. The Hartford Whalers endured a stretch up to March 1st in which they'd gone 2 13 and 1. So they'd managed to win just two of 16 games. It appeared at that point they were right out of the picture. They were missing both Francis and Deneen. Deneen came back on March 2nd in a game here at the Hartford Civic Center against Boston. That game, they won against Boston. From that point to tonight, with concluding a win tonight, their record is 15-3-2. And, and that was what I was referring to as one of the great stretch drives in NHL history, a playoff drive. You won't see many better than that one, where a team will go... Well, first of all, 12-3-2 and two to gain, just barely gain, uh, a, a playoff spot. And we were talking to Jack Evans prior to the game, Dan, and he was saying, you know, we couldn't afford to lose more than three games. I mean, we, we lost three, and we were worth our life just by losing the three. They went down to the final weekend. Quite a stretch drive indeed by the Wetters. We talked earlier about Emil Francis, and a year ago we were here, Brad, and 
The press were on his back. The fans were on his back. They were on Jack Evans' backs. What a difference a year will make, and Francis and Jack Evans look pretty smart right now. Oh, Dan, it wasn't even a year ago. It was this year. There was all kinds of rumors. Jack Evans had an altercation with a reporter. There was all kinds of controversy. They were demanding uh, that Jack Evans be fired, and Mill Francis uh, should do it, and if he doesn't do it, he should go himself. But there's nothing like winning hockey games to overcome any kind of controversy. Talk about rebuilding jobs, though, when you think about it. They had no draft choices to speak of. They'd all been traded away or flip-flopped. There weren't that many good draft choices. You don't trade into contention generally in this league anymore. Generally, you have to go through the draft, and yet he, that's basically what, except for some key players, of course, and I, and I have to look at, at Francis, first of all, uh, certainly the key, but uh, they have, in fact, traded this team into contention, and it's one of the great, I think, uh, jobs done by a general manager another great job because it's been done before by francis i think that if you look around the national hockey league you realize that the best teams in the national hockey league usually have the best management and that goes for teams like quebec and montreal and boston they're all have been there year in and year out regardless of they make the playoffs or not the management dictates really what the product is on the ice we're down to 442 remaining here in the third period, Hartford with an 8-4 to four lock on this game and on this series. Francis turning in center ice. Dropping it back into his own zone to Dave Babbitt. Hartford, by the way. Oh, each team is, uh, all the penalties were coincidental, apparently. I thought that they'd given uh, an extra penalty to one of the players, but apparently not. Back comes Anton Stasny, shot wide, rebound. Bote stopped as he tried to jam it in. And it's cleared away. Gord Donnelly pinching in from the point for Quebec. Got it in front. That's knocked away by the Hartford defense. And here comes Ron Francis, number 10. Francis leaving it there. Comes to Mike McEwen. His shot deflected off Donnelly into the corner. And McEwen held it in again. Backhander, that deflected as it Went off McDermott into the corner. Now Cote for Quebec. Winding it around to Gord Donnelly. To Anton Stosny. Trying to get it to his brother Peter. That's intercepted. And here's Kleinendorf beating McDermott. Silton and broke that up. Now tip it behind the net. Tip it for Hartford. Dropping it back there. McDermott couldn't center in Lemieux. Cleared it. Kleinendorf held it in. Leinendorf shooting one. That's the flex wide. Here's McDermott, number 23. Trying to center, and it's taken away by Eagles for Quebec, number 11. It's dumped into the Hartford zone, and we're under three minutes left here. Leinendorf firing it back out. Pat Price has it there. To Lemieux, to center ice, to Steve Patrick. Quenville hustling back. And Joel Quenville, number three. Now to Klein endorsed into center ice. Here's Tory Robertson with a shot and Goslar. A glove save. And he held on to that. And let's go to Dan Matheson again right here. We want to check the Smythe Division scores tonight. Winnipeg Jets fighting for their playoff lives. They are down 2-0 in the series. They were down 2-0 in the game to Calgary. But Paul McLean has brought them even in the third period. Issa Tikkanen has made it Edmonton 5. Canucks won that in the third in Vancouver. And here in Hartford, 8-4, to four, and this will be the third time in the last four years that the divisional champion in the Adams has gone out in three straight games in the opening round. To decline it, maybe, a championship. The Whalers in control here as Kumpel for Quebec. Tried to move it in. Babich is there, number 44. Gets it outside the line, shot back in by Quebec, but... Here's Tory Robertson, number 32. Robertson to Ferrero. Shoots one, and that goes off a stick and up into the crowd, and we're down to 2-12 remaining. As Dan Matheson has already told you, Montreal has won its series with Boston, and it looks like the Hartford Whalers will be taking on the Canadians. Wayne Babbage, the brother of, of course, the defenseman Dave Babbage, the highest 
draft choices in terms of brothers. One was a second choice overall in the draft, and the other a third choice overall in the draft. One by St. Louis, the other by Winnipeg. But looking at the point totals in this game for the Whalers, Anderson has two goals and three assists, a five-point night. Ferraro has two goals and one assist. We also have two points for Deneen, both assists. Uh, Francis, a goal and an assist. Samuelson, a goal and an assist. Two assists for Dave Babbage. And a goal and an assist by Deneen. Shelton trying to get from being behind his own goal. The Nordiques trailing by four with now less than two minutes to play. Here's Delorme shooting it in for Quebec. Going back to get it is Dave Babbage. Anton Stastny intercepts. The Cote who shot it wide. And then Quenville. Feeds it to Anderson, to Deneen, Deneen with Francis. Deneen shoots one, Gosselin scores! Deneen makes it 9-4 to four for the Hartford Whalers. Well, they're celebrating here. I think Gosselin just put that one in himself, Ron. Yeah, he did. He, had, he looked like he made the save and kind of started to reach for it, and I think he threw it into his own net. Watch it here. This is what happens, of course, when you start pinching your defenseman up. You wind up on two on one. Deneen just elected to go with it. The shot. Now here, as he reached for it, he just kicked it backwards and into his own net. That's what happened. So now it's nine to four. We have to harken back to one of the games we did earlier this year for CTV against Quebec and the Hartford Whalers that night won 11 to six. They have beaten the Canadians, scored 11 goals against the Canadians earlier this year in this building. They can run up the score. And it's been a nightmare for the Nordics and their fans. A long, frustrating evening indeed. Deneen gets the goal from Anderson and Quenville. 18-23 the time. Want to know who our offensive star of the game is? The fellow has got six points now. John Anderson. But in, in on all last, the last six goals for the Hartford Whalers. Uh, he started his, his rush when the score was three to two. And it's just been an Anderson show. Took over and has socked it to his ex-teammate. Now it is Quebec dumping it in. Wine endorsed back to get it. Goulet into four check on him. In comes Lemieux trying to kick it loose. Knocked away by Jarvis. And the Whalers with Tippett starting back. Tippett just dumps it in. Gosselin glove save. There's the Gord Donnelly. Who feeds it out to Michelle Goulet. To Lemieux who can't clear it in. And Tippett comes right back for Hartford. To Jarvis. Jarvis into his own zone. There less than a minute to play. Here in Hartford. With the Whalers in control with a 9-4 lead. McDermott moving into the Quebec zone. He was checked in. The crowd is standing here in Hartford. Let's listen to him and watch the Whalers eliminate the Nordiques here in the Adams Division.
great against the Nordics and bring on the Canadians is what they're going to be saying here in Hartford. Mike Leos, the 30-year-old native of Western Ontario, one of the heroes for Hartford, but they had many. And there's John Anderson in his six-point evening. What a hero. Against his old there. team. Against his old team. They had a great year, Quebec. They struggled, they fought, and finally they broke free in the Adams division to win it by a considerable margin over the Canadians. Many people thought this was the year because they didn't have a difficult final couple of weeks of the year that the Adams division champion had a chance to advance. But not to be because of a young upstart team that is quickly developing a great following across Canada. Who would have believed it? The upstart Hartford Whalers. Fourth place finishers on the last weekend of the season. Eliminate the division champion Quebec Nordiques in three strikes. The final score here tonight. Hartford nine, Quebec four. You've been watching the Stanley Cup playoffs on CTV. Line, speaking of red. It's the Calgary Flames against the Edmonton Oilers in Game 6, and Don Koharski is tonight's referee. The linesmen are Swede Knox and Gord Brossaker. 23-year-old Grant Fuhrer starts a game for the Edmonton Oilers. He has been nothing short of sensational in this series, perhaps the Oilers' best player for the first six games. And another 23-year-old out of the same draft in 1981 is Grant Fuhrer, Mike Vernon, who is the best player on the ice in game number five, will start a game for the Calgary Flames. The goaltending has been heroic. The series has been sensational, and Mickey, this building is wild. Wild isn't the word for it, Jimmy. Everybody in this city is wearing red. You can name it. Doctors, lawyers, everybody, they're all here from all parts of life tonight, and they've all got some kind of red on. They've shut down the town for this game.